Welcome back in to the countdown to tip off right here on News Talk 1230 KFJB AM 93.9 FM and as well as on KFJB TV. Now joined by Rahelio Sarin for the Marshalltown Bobcats, a junior for the Cats this season. It's our Cat Connection today, all brought to you by Top Crafters. Rahelio, you know, we've seen you get more and more playing time as the season has gone on this year as you jump up to the varsity level. What's your experience been like this year and how you kind of adapt into to playing with the squad? Oh, it's been fun, you know, with all my friends and my first varsity year. It's really been di really different from sophomore and freshman and just the year it's really been di really different from sophomore and freshman and just the game in general just learning it like how varsity plays like fast and i really like it yeah you know during football season we saw you not be a starter then you worked your way into the starting role same with basketball season you know you you start off a little bit slow and then you've really started to work in there and we've seen you with a, a lot of hustle plays trying to get rebounds things of that nature you feel more comfortable out there yeah it, well for my mindset is just that i just can't let anybody work harder than me so that's really what helped me throughout like football and basketball is like there's one thing I can control, and that's my effort, and that's what I've been doing. Yeah. I, I kind of relate you to Braden Weatherly. We love that guy, heart, hustle, and muscle, Braden Weatherly. Uh, your style of play is a little similar to his. He's tall and lanky. You're kind of a tall and lanky kid, too, and, and being able to get in there and kind of sneak between some guys and get some of those boards. I mean, what's it take to, to outwork other guys? Is it just doing the simple things that other people aren't doing? Yeah, it's just the simple things that the coach notices, like going out for the rebounds and just running back on defense that's the little things that help us win and that's what I try to bring to this team you know a lot of early season success for the Marshalltown Bobcats I know you guys have high expectations you know Dale and Houston even said this is a team we want to get to Wells Fargo Arena this year uh, to be able to see the success come to fruition and the wins start to pile up on the season how exciting has that been oh it's very exciting we haven't had this good of a record in a while so we know we're a good team, and we really look forward to the future and what we can do because we're not even touching the surface. Good luck the rest of the way this, uh, the rest of the season, Rahelio. Thank you. All right, Rahelio Sarad on our Cat Connection. It's all brought to you by Top Crafters. We are dedicated to building and installing the very best countertops. This is KFJB TV. Are you looking for an affordable way to update the look of your shower or vanity top? At Top Crafters, we offer more than just countertops. The possibilities are endless with custom and standard shower bases and panels. Wilson Art's innovative wall panel system and the Onyx Collection both make custom showers easy. These systems are beautiful, durable, and made in the USA. Top Crafters also has a huge selection of laminate, solid surface, quartz, and granite. For your next project, stop into our showroom at 811 Iowa Avenue West in Marshalltown. Since 1967, Jensen Ford Lincoln has served generations of families around Central Iowa. Quality vehicles, professional service, knowledge of our product, that's a part of Jensen. But what's more important to us is a trust that is passed down from every generation. Jensen Ford Lincoln wants to serve your family. We want to be there for your first car, we want to be there for your family SUV, and we want to see you drive away in the Mustang you always dreamed of. At Jensen, we want to be here for you now and every mile along the way. Legends American Grill is Marshalltown's Steakhouse. Ribeyes and sirloins, aged, hand-cut, and served with your choice of two of Legends' legendary sides and a dinner roll. If you are a prime rib fan, Legends has prime rib every Friday and Saturday starting at 4 p.m. With three sides to choose from, it's chef-seasoned and slow-cooked to tender, juicy perfection. Try Legends Prime Rib, and you'll know why it's Marshalltown's favorite. Legends American Grill is Marshalltown's Steakhouse. All righty, we're back with a countdown to tip off with the pre -game, coach's pregame brought to you by Iowa Kitchen Company. I'm here with Coach Brian Murphy. Uh, dropped kind of a heartbreaker Friday night, played really well in that first half against Waterloo East. Second half, uh, East's pressure and offensive efficiency really hurt the Bobcats. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we definitely uh, showed what we're capable of in the first half and then uh, kind of showed some of our uh, mistakes that we've been making throughout the season in the second half. So we've got to make sure we string together more consistency throughout the game and make sure we capitalize throughout the game and not just one half at a time. And tonight it's a polar opposite. Tale of two cities, basically. Waterloo East, five guards, very small, wants to run up and down. Fort Dodge won't shoot you out of the gym, but they will offensive rebound you to death. What is the big uh, struggle that Bobcats may have against the Dodgers here tonight? 
Yeah, the biggest thing we just we've got to make sure that we're disciplined on the defensive end. I mean, the the number one thing you nailed it. You know, those offensive putbacks they don't shoot a high percentage from the outside, but um, you know they have almost an astounding number of offensive rebounds per game. I think we're averaging 18, 19 offensive rebounds per game. Uh, Hively down low, we've got to make sure we track her, box her out every single possession. Um, and ultimately, it's going to come down to do we ca take care of the ball on our end because when they're scoring in transition or getting those shots up or we're trying to scramble in a position to rebound, you know that's really tough. So we got to make sure we take care of the ball on one end and then defense make sure we're locked in at all times on the other end good luck tonight coach thank you appreciate it and that was the pregame interview brought to you by iowa kitchen company of marshalltown let us design your dream space today with quality cabinetry and endless designs and styles to choose from we'll be right back with the starting lineups Excellent service and lasting relationships are just a few things we are proud of at Iowa Kitchen Company. We value our customers, and when it comes to designing a new kitchen, bathroom, or office space, we want our customers to get the results they are looking for. We provide quality cabinetry, craftsmanship, and design with endless finishes and styles to choose from. Let Iowa Kitchen Company guide you through your next project. Visit our showroom today at 811 Iowa Avenue West in Marshalltown or visit our website at iowakitchenco.com. Small businesses are the backbone of our community. Marshalltown Area Chamber of Commerce reminds you that when you shop locally, you are benefiting members of our community and adding to our local community overall. You'll find local business owners are generally more knowledgeable, provide better service, and even know their customers by name. Marshalltown Area Chamber of Commerce exists to be an advocate for our business community. Membership in the chamber benefits your business and adds to the strength of our advocacy efforts. For more information on shopping locally and chamber membership, go to Marshalltown. in your home is power power to remodel your home take a memorable vacation at a deck or patio lennox employees credit union can help you unleash the financial power you possess with a home equity loan consolidate debt fund a student loan or pay for a wedding home equity loans are as low as 5.74 percent for a five-year fixed rate loan the loan process is easy see lennox employees credit union 1004 east main street in marshalltown member ncua equal housing lender online at lennoxecu.com the right insurance agent can make all the difference. Assured Partners agents represent multiple insurance companies. They can pick and choose from a larger variety of outstanding insurance options. Assured Partners also handles life and health insurance and Medicare supplement coverage. With access to local, regional, and national insurance companies, Assured Partners will create policies tailored to the coverage you need. For more information, go online to assuredpartners.com slash Marshalltown. Power through partnership with Assured Partners in Marshalltown, Toledo, and West Des Moines.
rebounds were brought in by Fort Dodge. But, uh, you know, just clean that kind of thing up and, uh, you know, make for a little bit of a better test. But you can't can't argue a, a pretty decent start here for the Bobcats up 3-2. to two. Yeah, it's uh, we've we've seen this Fort Dodge team. They love to press. Bobcats have struggled with the press, and here's the first for the lefty goes up and is in. Laney Mayo shooting at just around 60% from the foul line. Second one's up, no good. Another offensive rebound, and that is number three already for Peyton Hively. Hively averages. About 10 and a half rebounds a game, four of those on the offensive board. She may have that in the first quarter. Yeah, look at this, a little stack right there at the free throw line on that inbound play here on KFJB TV as you watch on. And they get it out to McCabe, McCabe to McElrath corner, and that's got to be a walk, but no call. LJ Mail up, no good. Over, able to get it. My goodness, did a great job of staying straight up. As Hively gets the offensive rebound, her fourth so far, and the Bobcats find themselves down five to three. Sarah's got to go get that. It's going to stay with the Bobcats. Yeah, almost a turnover right there, but uh, luckily we'll keep that one. And Borsch is going to pass it in right near half court. Far side to Huffman. Borsch. Probing the defense, gets it to Amaya, throws it off her shin and out of bounds. A good first couple possessions, last couple just uh, untimely mistakes. Amaya Moore is going to be at the top of the defense here guarding McElrath. LJ Mayo looks inside to her sister Laney, and it's going to be a foul on the ground, and they are going to call it on. It's either going to be on Borsch or it's going to be on, it's going to be on Ellie Hughes. We can't be too uh, displeased with the early on start here, but, boy, Fort Dodge, their height is really showing up inside, though, with a lot of those offensive rebounds. Wide open three, going to be back iron, no good. Capeyu with another rebound, her second. She dribbles out and then gets it to Huffman. Huffman cross-court pass, can't do it. She telegraphed that, and that's got to be a charge. They're going to call a charge. Great job. Sarah made a mistake, came back, and took care of it, and the foul's going to be on number 22, Mia McCaleb. Well, if you can get Fort Dodge in foul trouble, that'll be key tonight. Get them in foul trouble and, you know, get some of the big ladies off the floor that, uh, you know, bring Fort Dodge that height. As Amaya, they're able to break the press. Huffman, and she throws it right to Michaela. Not sure where she was going or who she was thinking about. She got up in the air, and now it's five on four as Huffman trots down the court. Michaela swings it over to Laney. Oh, she walked. And they call the walk. That was uh, that was a euro step that didn't euro. <laughs> it was just a step. <laughs> Four fifty like left that. to go in this. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh boy, we got to be ready. And it's the lackadaisical approach yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Bobcats fall in this where it's that's the thing. Yeah. When you're when you're playing a seven and four team, you can't take any play off. You know they're right. going to be right on you. You know you got to be ready for that inbounds. You can't let that thing bobble around and get on the floor, and then they pick it up, and now they got it underneath their own hoop, and they're going to try yep. to get it to one of their tall players inside. So uh, somebody keeps on uh, having some conversations here. They tried to throw Treshawn Brooks out of the arena. They told him to get out of the stand. Something was said apparently. The official on the far side having a conversation and now pointing at Treshawn Brooks. And so Treshawn Brooks we going to be thrown out of the gym. I'm intrigued to see what that means. Um, Boy. We have had this gentleman ref before that he was a part of the Look at Me Brigade earlier this year. So um, <laughs> Kinsley Bowie, that, that's very interesting to be, hopefully it's just for the girls game. Kinsley Bowie has it. It's 5-3, to three, Bobcats trailing. Bowie with the runner off top of the glass. No good. It's going to be ripped away. LJ Mail's got it. She's got six foot, and she's got some shimmy to her game. She's she's a baller. Gets it inside. Oh. It's going to be off Hively's. No, it's going to be off the Bobcats. Yeah, it's going to stay. Sarah Huffman came from behind and poked that one out. But, uh, you know, hanging in there tight early on. It, you know, kind of. I know they haven't 
done a great job with some turnovers and stuff like that. Rebounding has been a little bit poor early on, but I like the physicality. Yeah, Bobcats came to play, but they, as we noted earlier, you can't take any plays off. There's no lackadaisical approach. They're in a 1-2-2 zone. Amaya Moore is able to tie him up. It's going to stay with Fort Dodge, but nice job at the point of that trap defense. It's going to be a timeout by the Dodgers. Bobcats down 3-5, to five, but we'll come back with the rest of the first quarter here on KFJB-TV. Marshalltown knows competition. We started forging trowels in 1890 and evolved into manufacturing tools for masonry, drywall, concrete, flooring, tile, paint, and more. Today, we're still going strong. Marshalltown strong. As a worldwide leader in manufacturing, we crush the competition. We believe in our community and are proud to support Bobcat Athletics. Hey, Bobcat Nation, my name is Tanya Mora, and you're watching KFJB TV. And we're back here at the Marshalltown Roundhouse. Bobcats find themselves down 5-3 to three with 3.55 left to go. This is a very good Fort Dodge team. Bobcats yeah. have been game so far. Yeah, so far they have. And, you know, this is a team that averages about 47 points per game. They give up 43. And I alluded to it earlier tonight that they're a team that keeps on improving the Fort Dodge Dodgers. But, you know, the Bobcats are too. You know, I know yep. they had – they they quite possibly had their best first half of a game – against Waterloo East the other night, and then they had possibly their worst second half of a game on Friday night as well. But I think if they can kind of get somewhere in the middle ground, they're going to find themselves hanging around in these type of game. And right there, you get a fork dodge turnover, yep. and it's back to you. You can tie the game on this possession. Yeah, I would co-sign both of that. First half was great. Second half, not so good. Uh, but here tonight, a lot of intensity, a lot of good play by the Bobcats. Fort Dodge has rolled the Bobcats a uh, early and often over the last couple seasons but the bobcats are showing they're making growth they're they're growing as a team growing in their expectation huffman gets the top of the key that's a kick one thing that we're noticing very early on is the bobcats broke the press against east mm -hmm. not to score tonight they're breaking the press looking ahead and looking to score yeah exactly they did that with al hughes earlier in this one and i, I thought that was a great job and great recognition to to, again, yeah, that's another yep. learning thing is, okay, now we broke the press. Now what are we going to do in mm -hmm. having a plan of attack? Down to Georgia Jansen. Jansen off the glass, oh. no good. A nice cut by Kinsley Bowie. We saw her do that yeah. Friday night. Yep. And then the and then just the, the head in the game to drop it down to Georgia Jansen, who is sitting right there on the block. You know, that's, you know, two really nice passes in a row. You're right. Yep. I mean, from Capella to Bowie and then to Jansen from Bowie, and, and uh, she's not able to put in the first free throw. But, you know, just, a, just again, more basketball player plays coming together mm -hmm. as the season grows here for the Bobcat ladies. Second one's no good as well. And it before the free throw, L.J. Mayo went out. She's kind of stretching out her leg there on the, on the side. And coming in for her is Morgan Bodholt. Bobcats trapped down. They have Michaela dead to rights, but able to kick it out to Bothold. Bothold gets it over now down low to Hively. Hively off the glass, no good. The freshman, Georgia Jansen, clears. Same height, different width there, but Georgia Jansen, <laughs> strong elbows. Yeah, he, he, I just, Georgia, apparently she's a really, really aggressive soccer player, and the coaching staff has tried to, break that out of her in, on the basketball court. And I think we, we start to see a little more aggressiveness from Georgia Jansen as the season's gone along. So uh, apparently she's a heck of a soccer player, so we look forward to seeing that too. And it's going to be bumped, and it's going to stay off of Kinsley Bowie. Uh, she, got, she got jolted pretty good, but you got to be strong with the basketball. Yeah, Bobcats here running with Georgia Jansen, Kinsley Bowie, Amaya Moore, Sarah Huffman, and Sydney Capayu. For Fort Dodge, it's McElrath. Hively off the glass, no good, but the foul is going to be on. The foul is going to be on Georgia Jansen. The freshman will pick up her first, and Hively is going to go to the line. Hively shooting just under 60% from the free throw stripe. I remember her being a little more impactful last year. Not to say it's, it's early on here, but I, I just remember Peyton Hively being making that sh that free throw last year she just missed that one I, I just 
Remember, more of a dominant player. That's who I was expecting here in her senior season. But, um, I mean, I know she had 18 points against North, and it's early on on the road, and it's Monday, and you just played on Friday and a short weekend. Yeah, that's where the Bobcats, the Bobcats are doing a lot of things right. Second chance points, giving them up in droves. They're second chance opportunities. As Sydney Capayu gets her third rebound of the night, and she is quickly fouled. That'll be the first foul on Mackenzie McElrath. Five to three still. Bobcats have the press here. They've done a good job with this trapping press. Huffman gets past it. Oh, nice play. Oh, my goodness. They've got it. It gets oh. it up to Amaya Moore. She's got to catch that. Yeah, she did not have her hands up. She was not ready for the pass, and when you're on a fast break like that, you got to be ready. Yeah, Amaya was running the lane like she should, but didn't look to be running to score. You're exactly right there. Bobcats have not had any problems with this press. It's a little bit slow as a left-handed layup, but my goodness, Laney Mayo was not slow in getting that off the glass. That's her third point tonight as it's 7-3, to 145 to go, and Georgia... Georgia had scored on her mind, but it did not work as she came down with the basketball for a travel. It's 7-3, to 145 left to go. Bobcats, Dodgers all night long. Girls game, then guys game, doubleheader here on KFJB TV and KFJB AM 1230 and 93.9 as LJ Mayo comes back in and knocks down a three. That's a big one. 10-3 to three as the Bobcats almost turn it over, and they do. Yeah, and that's the thing is... You know, early on here, those turnovers are just going to mount up if you you keep on that trail. So, again, that's how you that's how Fort Dodge is going to build their lead here tonight. And the the more you limit that early on, the better off you're going to be. But a couple of bad turnovers back to back. A dribble drive by Mail gets it off the hand to Hively, but it's grabbed down by McCaleb, and she's going to be fouled by number three Kinsley Bowie, the freshman, picks up her first foul of the night. Man, already 14 fouls on each team in the first quarter alone. Aggressive play, sometimes yeah. a little bit too aggressive, but they get it. McElrath for three in the corner, no good. Rebound is going to be off of Laney Mail, and it's going to be the Bobcats' ball. This is really where you hope. Bobcats, it was three to five, two minutes ago. You don't want to see things snowball as they have at the end of other quarters. Sarah yeah, Huffman, sure. Sydney Capayu out for the Bobcats. I like this lineup with the three freshmen in there. Yeah, there is. Uh, Coach has talked about he's he's mixed and matches lineups much more since Christmas. And now, oh, my goodness, you can use timeouts. That's the one thing I don't understand why the ladies don't sometimes, you know, sometimes just take a timeout. Mm -hmm. Get out of a bad position. Instead of committing a turnover. Exactly. Dribble drive by L.J. Mail, knocked away by Borsch. Gets it back out to Bothold. Bothold, oh, Ooh, my wow. goodness, everything but in. 30, yeah. 37 seconds left to go. There's going to be a three-second difference between shot clock and game clock. Bowie picks it up over to Borsch. Timeline guarded closely by McElrath. She gets past her, gets into the lane. Oh, nice drop off to Georgia Jansen, oh. no good. But the Bobcats, nice idea by number 11. Bowie gets back into defense. Oh, they don't call anything, and it's going to be... No, it's going to be saved to Fort Dodge underneath. McElrath travels. Yeah. And it's going to be nine and a half seconds to go. I'm surprised it was not called a charge. Yeah, I really yeah. thought that was going to be a charge down low, but uh, not called that. Georgia Jansen with for the rebound and the, the opportunity to put it back, but uh, just could not get it. But a uh, good hustle on both ends of the floor here for the Bobcats. But, uh, again, you know, I think I have them down for five turnovers so far in the game. That's just kind of an insurmountable yeah. thing when you're taking on a good team. Yeah, this is one that, oh, my goodness, there's six. It's, I, it, sometimes it's these rocket bounce passes that never have a shot to be given. You throw it a 1,000 miles an hour at their feet. That's never going to be a good basketball play. Low percentage. Very low. Bothold for left-handed jumper. No good. Hively off the glass. Mm. She is an animal on the glass. That is her fifth offensive rebound in the first quarter. Yeah, really. Uh, you know, L. King. Er, <laughs> 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 I did it again. L. Hughes. 
she kind of rebounded with her hands there. She's really got to do a little bit of a better job down low against Hively, boxing out, you know, throwing a hip into her a yep. little bit, getting that position. You can't just let her get the position and then uh, you try to rebound with arms because right there you're going to foul every single time. It's Hively, did she make both of them right there? She made both of them. Yep. And that'll do it for the end of the first. It's 12-3 to three Dodgers. Bobcats trying to hold tough. You're watching Bobcat Basketball on News Talk 1230 KFJB AM and 93.9 FM. D within a city not far from here. This city includes a beautiful apartment building with indoor parking, a chapel, a movie theater, a swimming pool, exercise and recreational facilities, putting greens, and more. The city isn't really a city, but it is a wonderful place to live. Make friends and live your best life. It's the Embers Retirement Community in Marshalltown. The Embers provides security, independence, and companionship. Beautiful grounds outside and lovely studio, one- and two-bedroom apartments inside. See it for yourself. The Embers in Marshalltown. Hey, Bobcats, it's Sydney Capeo, and you're watching Marshalltown Girls Basketball on KFJBT. And we're back here in Marshalltown. Bobcats down 12 to 3. It was 5 to 3 with two minutes left to go in that first quarter. And some unforced turnovers really helped the Dodgers spread that lead. But as we get into the second quarter, we want to bring you a regional scoreboard update brought to you by Central State Bank. Discover what Central State Bank can do for you. Locations in Ames, State Center, and West Des Moines. Brandon. Well, pretty light Monday night, but right now West Marshall is leading AGWSR 26-18. to 18. And we appreciate that. Always bringing you Marshall County High School scores from West Marshall and East Marshall. Though East Marshall is off tonight. East Marshall beat AGWSR by about 40 Friday night. As an alum, it made my heart happy. Bobcats basketball <laughs> first. No Mustangs. <laughs> You're welcome. Oh, that tickled me. <laughs> and it's a blocking foul on LJ Mail for the Dodgers. <laughs> That'll be her first. She leads all scores with five tonight. Uh, nice freshman player, left-hander, uh, plays a bit of that guard forward position. Huffman takes spot hold off the bounce, drop step to Capayu. 17 feet. Borsch lines up a three-point shot. Back iron, no good. Oh. Rebound by Hively yet again. She is absolutely destroying that glass on both ends. Hively, little hook shot, no good. Ellie Hughes with the rebound. Aniston Borsch, here come the Bobcats. She's guarded, picked up half court by LJ Mail. Gets it to Huffman. Huffman surveying Hughes top of the key. Maya Moore takes a baseline. And then Capeu, wide open, 18-footer, and it shot 19. It'll go the Dodgers' way, 12-3, 7-12 left to go. You like the aggressiveness by Sydney, don't you? Yeah, I love that shot, but, uh, yeah, I don't know if she just didn't see it right coming off that angle, but, uh, yeah, I love the aggressiveness. Easy bucket, though, then in the other way. Yeah, Bodhold missed that by about three feet, but that offensive glass has been the best offense for Fort Dodge all year long, and tonight is no exclusion. Boy, Ellie Hughes was wide open in the paint. Cat's got to look up a little bit more and look for that extra pass. Oh, Sydney's got to pull the trigger on yeah. that. Yeah. There you go. Amaya's Come on, got Amaya. a three. Off oh. the glass back iron, no good. Rebound, Bodhold. Here comes the Dodgers. Oh, she walked. Yep. Nice so, little cut under there. Yeah, back to the Cats there as, uh, you know, a turnover. Got to capitalize here. What is, it, what is it? What's the run right now? Nine it nothing? Is, yeah, it's going to be. Run? It's going to be. No, it's actually going to be a 12 nothing run. Bobcats had a 3-2 lead. Oh, yeah, it was, you're lead. right. You're right. Yeah, it was 3-2. And the Bobcats, when they were able to be aggressive and aggressive off that break. And it's going to be a timeout timeout bobcats will take one with them bobcats down big 14 to 3 here on kfjb tv choose marshtown community college for your education a quality education hands-on career training convenient on-campus living one-on-one -on -one attention from my instructors earning my aa degree and transferring to university all while saving money why was MCC the right choice for me? The great student activities and the friends I met. Two convenient locations and the option to take online classes. The right choice is MCC. Hey Bobcat fans, it's Sarah Huffman, number four, and you're watching KFJV-TV. <laughs> yeah, and we're back here. Bobcats down 14 to three. 
it was three to two Bobcats there in the first quarter. Uh, really came being aggressive off of that Fort Dodge press. Really gave the Bobcats a couple opportunities. But the name of the game is what we what we feared. Offensive glass. Hively is destroying the Bobcats on the glass. Oh, Capayu gets it knocked away by Peyton Hively. And they're going to call a travel on McElrath. I think Ellie tr- kind of helped her travel, but no call on the Bobcats. Anderson Borsch is going to trigger it underneath the hoop. It's Capayu, Huffman, Moore, Moore and Hughes, and Anderson throws it to nobody. As here comes LJ Mayo, the left-handed freshman, gets it over to McCaleb. McCaleb down to Laney Mayo. Mayo cross court to her sister LJ. Wrap around down to Laney Mayo. Left-handed hook no good. And Capayu is able to rip away her fourth rebound of the night. And here come the Bobcats down 11. But playing really good basketball, just really struggling, allowing second-chance opportunities on the offensive glass. Nice take by Huffman. Left-handed layup, no good, but she was fouled. And I believe that's going to be on L.J. Mayo. That, no, they're going to call it on Peyton Hively. That is Hively's second. Huffman, chance to make her first free throws of the night and first points of the night. The junior guard, first one is up, and it's good. Bobcats end a long scoring drought. It's 14 to four. Hively's gonna be out on this, and that is a breath of fresh air for the Bobcats because they have not been able to box her out. No, she's been eating it up inside, and it's really tough to stop. Look at that shot by Keith Stewart on KFJB TV. Love that shot. He is is a gem. He He is. He's a gem. He's a man who knows how to work the cam. That's right. That's actually on his business card. (laughs) Work the cam and sling the little Debbies. Keith Stewart. (laughs) Down inside the Laney Mail. (laughs) Dropped it off to McCaleb for the bucket. Her first of the night. Nice pass. Personally, I like the, uh, what what was the one? The chocolate and the wafer and the peanut butter. Oh, the nutty called? is, well, this is the whole thing. Is, the, is it a nutty bar? Is a nutty buddy a Little Debbie snack, or is that I think the a, other brand? I, th- I think a nutty bar. Oh, like, oh. Sydney, uh, th- you can see from this, <laughs> we both saw it, it was like the two-hand <laughs> shove. She said, I need a little more room, so I'm going to clear it out myself. <laughs> That's her second <laughs> foul of the night. I like it. I like it. You know what? Take it. Yeah. Um, Although that is 17 foul here yeah, in the first half. Yeah, we, we don't want more of those. No. We need Sydney on the floor. Correct. Oh, nice, nice job by the Bobcats, but Dodgers able to clear it out. McElrath not afraid to shoot back iron, no good. Rebound Capayu, and she's going to be fouled by a believe number three, and that's going to be off of that's going to be on Bodhold. You know, since I've gone paleo, I I don't know. I feel like I'm an old man now. I I, I just start reminiscing about old treats I used to have. (laughs) (laughs) It happens to the best. uh, Kids, I I remember when I used to have uh, a nut or butter. That's Uh, right. You know. (laughs) So, (laughs) as uh, our producer, Zach Tomish, says, those are good. Yes, they are. And Capayu's able to get the first one to go. (laughs) And those reminiscing about snacks, I was reminiscing (laughs) as I saw Zach Tomish eating a Twix and still drinking a Mountain Dew. Uh, I promise you folks, we do not entrust the producing role to a high schooler. He is an adult man. I I haven't had that kind of snack since uh, 04. (laughs) Yeah, that that was 86 for me. Freshman or kindergarten year. Gets it up to mail, mail off the glass. Back iron, no good. No Hively there. There is no... Bobcats able to clear it out. Yeah. 16-5, 435 left to go. Kinsley Bowie off her hand, but Georgia Jansen tracks it down. Huffman surveying the lot. They bring out a bit of a trap. Bobcats have them rushing, and doggone it, off the Ooh. leg and out. Got that touch for Dodge on the way out, rolling out, but uh, apparently not. It feels watching this as the Bobcats extend the defense. I like this. Mixing it up a little bit, but they're going to drop back into their – You've got to know where it's going. I liked it until that happened. Yeah, that's Caleb good. Caleb with her second bucket. Yeah, that's excellent. <coughs> Excuse me, excellent uh, ball movement. Georgia Jansen tracks it down, and but she's standing out of bounds. 
one of the things you're seeing with this Bobcat offense, when they're able to break the press, I this is not a very good press. Fort Dodge seems to be a little bit of a step slow. The Bobcats just have not been able to execute on the backside. Able to knock it away, and yeah, Kinsley over. Bowie gets it. Huffman lines up LJ Mayo, takes it down, but able to be ripped away, knocked away by Mackenzie McElrath. The point guard clears it, and here comes the Dodgers. She's got Laney Mayo out in the corner, left-hander. Far too Whoa. long, set, bump set spike. <laughs> I know we only did one volleyball game on KFJB this year, but I still know what that is, and it drops in number 13. Brooklyn Palmer is able to knock it in. Yeah. It's going to be a full timeout. We'll take them with it. Bobcats struggling to score 20-5 to five Dodgers. And and save for your child to go to college. But medical school after graduation was a surprise. A happy, expensive surprise. Wells Fargo Advisors can help. For more than 125 years, we've created wealth management and investment strategies aimed at achieving our clients' personal financial goals. When opportunities surprise you, turn to Wells Fargo Advisors. Together, we'll go far. Wells Fargo Advisors is located at 14 East South Ridge Road in Marshalltown. Call them at 641-752-5401. They're a member SIPC. Hey, Bobcat Nation. I'm Millie Heitman. You're watching KFJB TV. And we're back. Bobcats down 20-5. to 5. Defense has been good tonight. Offense has not been able to execute. D. 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 This is our first Bill Walton of 2023. Welcome back, Bill. No, we had him a couple weeks ago. I thought it. I thought it was the end of 2022. It was Ames. Oh, it was my Ames. Goodness. It You're was right. 2023. Bill comes back. Well, twice. Dylan, you know the Bobcats early on here. You know the the Bobcat as a as a predator, they like to hunt their their prey early in the morning, Dylan. And I start my morning early before anyone else rises. Really, honestly, but. What I'm trying to say is these cats got to get after it early here in this game if they want to hang around late. I like it. Bobcats have it. Millie and I Heitman love in. people with hair. <laughs> <laughs> Millie Heitman, Kinsley Bowie, Georgia Jansen, Amaya Moore, and Aniston Borsch for the Bobcats. It's McElrath, McCaleb, along with Palmer, Mayle, and the and LJ Mayle in for the Dodgers. And ripped away by Laney Mayle. She'll dribble it on up. Both male girls are able to play a little inside-outside, that 5'11", six-foot frame, but with the handle. McElrath, top of the key. Bobcats again in that 1-2-2 trapping zone defense. Amaya's working hard up front. Borsch guarding. Oh, oh nice tip away. Good read. I like Martin Luther King Jr. I like solar energy. Both great things, as it is <laughs> Martin Luther King Jr. King Jr. Day. I don't think it's Solar Energy Day. It is not. But uh, it is not. But both are both are great things. But the Bobcats are trying to solar power their way back into this one. Down by 15. That is a stretch, but we'll <laughs> take it. They are down 20 to five. Two and a half left to go here. Bobcats defense has been good. I can. There's maybe only one or two possessions where first shot scored for the Dodgers. And that's going to be, they're yeah, going to get clock. a shot clock violation. Really? Yeah, shot clock never reset because it was only tipped out of bounds. There was no right. possession by the Cats. So Great defensive possession. Yeah, great but, job. But on that defensive side, Bobcats have only given up, I think, a bucket once or twice on the first shot attempt. The problem has been second chance opportunities. Looking ahead as Capayu gets it, and it's knocked away. Not catching the ball cleanly in transition has been a bugaboo for the yeah, Bobcats. That's a great pass from Millie Heitman right there. Yeah, if, if Sydney could have caught that cleanly, that would have been an easy two. Dribble drive by Butthole. She's going to walk again. That's her second traveling violation here in the first half. Two you know, minutes to go here in the first half. Yeah, you know, we're talking about the Cats turning it over. It seems like here in the second quarter, four Dodges turned it over uh, a lot. Oh, that's not a good pass. That's yeah, not that ever going to work. Nice block by Millie Heitman. She makes a mistake, but that length is able to knock it away. And are they going to call that? That's going to be a foul on the Dodgers, and that should be free throws for Kinsley Bowie. Yeah. yeah, and the bonus here with eight on the Dodgers. Bobcats have done a great job defensively here in this first half. Holding the Dodgers to 20 points, only eight here in the second. 
Ellie Hughes is going to come back in for Millie Heitman. Heitman gave him a nice minute and a half. Other, she did throw it away, but was able to get a block, a nice pass, moving the ball up court. Kinsley, first free throw is up. That is a teardrop. Yeah, I was just going to say, she's got massive arc on the free throw, but she has great form. Just call her St. Louis, right? <laughs> Back iron, no good. Ken Hugie's old stomping grounds. That's right. Ah, oh, we miss Hugie. We do. Every day. And Lily, his dog, who used to profusely bark at me. We did get some great deals when they were doing their moving sale, though. <laughs> Kick out the lane. So we appreciate that. It's free. We don't want it. <laughs> yeah. We're not moving it. <laughs> oh, gracious. I ever tell you about the time he, he had me come over and help move his elliptical? Yes, yes. The most aggressive day I've ever seen in my life from Ken Hughie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, moving. At, and a miss. Hughes rebounds and gets it to Capeu. Yeah, moving exercise equipment yeah. or couches. Yeah. That will tell you really who someone is. Yeah, we, we got rid of an elliptical last night, and they said, is it free? I said, yes. Yeah. You want help moving it. <laughs> uh, Hively gets it. Steps up for three. Ooh. Front iron no good. Rebound boards. Bobcats have it. Thirty or 57 seconds left to go. 20 to 6. Huffman's got it. Cuts two defenders. Gets it to Kapayu, top of the key. Again, this is, if the Bobcats would move, there are tons of opportunities to score the basketball. Yeah, oof. But it comes on the side. It does not come throwing it right down the middle. Hively throws it up, and it's no good. Yeah, that's the one thing right there offensively. It wasn't a good set. You're right. They've got to look up, move the ball a little bit better, and be kind of anticipating something, yep. you know. Uh, and then right there, you turn it over, don't get back all the way in transition, and then uh, commit it and give two easy free throws right here for Hively. Hively has been as good at advertise on the glass. She has struggled a bit scoring-wise. She yeah. has five. Second one is up. Front iron no good. Rebound Georgia Jansen clears it to Bowie. 35 seconds left to go. Capeu has it. They're going to have to get it across. They're going to need to call a timeout here. It's going to be a 10-second. Yeah, that was. Is. That was none of the girls were paying attention to what was happening there. Yeah. That's tough. Bobcats That's... quickly. Amaya Moore is going to sneak in here with 25.6 left to go. She's going to come in for Aniston Borsch, so it'll be Kinsley, Bowie, Huffman, Amaya Moore, and then on that back line it's going to be Georgia Jansen and Capeu. Laney Mayo, LJ Mayo, along with Brooklyn Palmer, Bud Holt, and Mackle, McCaleb. And the foul is going to be on... I believe it's going to be on Kinsley Bowie, and that will be two shots. It's No, it's going to be on Georgia Jansen. That will be her second. And McCaleb's averaging on the year. She is averaging just about two points a game. She has four so far in the first half. And the first one is up front iron, no good. Second one is up, and that one's good. Her fifth point of the night. Bobcats have 15 seconds. Capeu gets it to Huffman. Can they clear? Oh. Terrible cross-court pass. Down to Laney Mail off the glass and good. Too easy. What you cannot do is a cross-court on that. That's for sure. And they turn it over again. And that'll do it for the first half. Again. Dodgers make a run at the end of the quarter. It's 24-6. Bobcats down big at the half. We'll be right back looking at the first half stats here on KFJB-TV. Never have to wait after ordering new appliances. At Penn Appliance, you wouldn't. With an incredible selection in stock and ready to install today, our friendly team is here to help you pick the perfect set to match your style. And let our professional technicians install and set up your new appliances, often delivering the very next day. Stop in today, see all the new features, and find your new look at Pence Appliance. For sales and service of everything appliance, go see the Pence team. 
McGregor's Furniture and Mattress has your mattress. Every firmness, comfort, and support level, each at a great price. Make the investment today for a good night's sleep for years to come. McGregor's also has quality furniture for every room in your home. Beautiful, comfortable sofas, recliners, dinette sets, and office furniture to help you work and relax in comfort and style. McGregor's Furniture is proud to bring you quality furniture and great service, and they are proud to support Bobcat Athletics. McGregor's Furniture and Mattress, downtown Marshalltown, open seven days a week. Golf doesn't end when the weather gets cold at Wandering Creek Golf Club in Marshalltown with their two full swing simulators. Anything you can do at an outdoor golf course, you can do at their indoor golf simulators with 80 plus golf courses to choose from. Wandering Creek has numerous indoor golf tournaments this winter, so check their website for dates and details at wanderingcreekgolf.com. You could also save with special discounts for online bookings. Make a full day of it with golf, food, and your favorite beverage at Wandering Creek Golf Club. Your home is the one place where everything should be perfect, including your air. Capon and Brown helps you achieve the perfect air you deserve with reliable, groundbreaking, award-winning Lennox products. Call Capon and Brown to hear more about how they can help you feel healthier and happier in your home. It doesn't get any more perfect than that. Call them today at 641-753-3563 or visit them online at CaponandBrownInc.com, your local premier Lennox dealer, where quality has been a promise for 40 eight years. Welcome to the Halftime Report on KFJB TV. And we're back here at halftime. It's 24 to 6 Dodgers. Again, at the end of the first quarter, end of the second quarter, Dodgers went on many runs to extend this lead to 18 points. And as we look at this first half, it's now time to look at our stats from the first half presented by Ken's Transmission of Marshalltown. Brandon. Sydney Capayu with uh, one. She went one of uh, two at the free throw line in the first half. Uh, Ellie Hughes with two points. Amaya Moore with one. And uh, Sarah Huffman and Kinsley Bowie with a point apiece. All the Bobcats scoring except for Ellie Hughes. Uh, I think that, that bucket she had, she was on the right block. She came yep. within, like, what, the first couple minutes of the game? Yeah, it was right, right off a of broke broke yeah. the press, got it up, and that's gave the, the only Bobcats field goal lead. made. Yep. That's yep. the only field goal made here in that first half. Every other point is, by the way, a free throw in that first half. Laney Mail, uh, she really she hit a three. I think she was the the key contributor to to getting them on the run. She's got eight points in the first half. Meanwhile, five for Peyton Hively and uh, five points for Mia McHale in that first half so anyway an interesting first half for the Fort Dodge Dodgers and your Marshalltown Bobcats it was 12 to 3 at the end of the first quarter but uh, the Bobcats were just not able to keep it close and they went on that run it was about a 12-0 run or so for, yep. for Fort Dodge before the Bobcats were able to get a point back on the board but uh, been a little bit of a struggle in this first half yeah Bobcats did well first six minutes of quarters those last two really struggled with but when we come back we will look at the regional scoreboard along with the Kent Transmission key adjustment to the second half. You're watching the Halftime Report here on News Talk 1230, KFJB AM and 93.9 FM and watching on KFJB TV. In times of financial uncertainty, how can you stay on track? Call on someone who's invested in your success. Zach Wall, your Marshalltown Edward Jones financial advisor, is here to help you. He will work to build a complete picture of your financial life, including your unique goals and passions, so he can help you achieve what's most important to you. Call Zach Wall at 641-752-3017 to schedule an appointment today. Edward Jones, member SIPC. At Sports Plus Sports Medicine and Physical Therapy Center, we customize each patient's treatment plan to their individual needs. What does that mean? It means that not every back or knee problem is treated the same and that your program will be unique and designed especially for your needs or problems. This improves how quickly you will return to work or sports. The Sports Plus staff is encouraging and takes pride in your successful recovery. This is just one more reason why champions choose Sports Plus Physical Therapy as their favorite place to rehabilitate and train. Since 1967, Jensen Ford Lincoln has served generations of families around Central Iowa. Quality vehicles, professional service, knowledge of our product, that's a part of Jensen. But what's more important to us is a trust that is passed down from every generation. 
Jensen Ford Lincoln wants to serve your family. We want to be there for your first car, we want to be there for your family SUV, and we want to see you drive away in the Mustang you always dreamed of. At Jensen, we want to be here for you now and every mile along the way. At halftime, your Marshalltown Bobcat ladies trailing the Fort Dodge Dodgers 24 to 6. Scoreboard update all brought to you tonight by Central State Bank. At halftime, West Marshall is leading AGWSR 26 to 18. At the end of the third, PCM on top of, or excuse me, Newton on top of PCM at the end of the third. It is Newton 33, PCM 29. And uh, just got an update. West Marshall 37 28 at the end of the third quarter. They are leading AGWSR. That's an update on the Central State Bank scoreboard. We'll get those halftime adjustments next right here at halftime from the Roundhouse on KFJB TV. American Grill is Marshalltown Steakhouse. Ribeyes and sirloins, aged, hand-cut, and served with your choice of two of Legends' legendary sides and a dinner roll. If you are a prime rib fan, Legends has prime rib every Friday and Saturday starting at 4 p.m. With three sides to choose from, it's chef-seasoned and slow-cooked to tender, juicy perfection. Try Legends' prime rib, and you'll know why it's Marshalltown's favorite. Legends' American Grill is Marshalltown Steakhouse. The right insurance agent can make all the difference. Assured Partners agents represent multiple insurance companies. They can pick and choose from a larger variety of outstanding insurance options. Assured Partners also handles life and health insurance and Medicare supplement coverage. With access to local, regional, and national insurance companies, Assured Partners will create policies tailored to the coverage you need. For more information, go online to assuredpartners.com slash Marshalltown. Power through partnership with Assured Partners in Marshalltown, Toledo, and West Des Moines. Small businesses are the backbone of our community. Marshalltown Area Chamber of Commerce reminds you that when you shop locally, you are benefiting members of our community and adding to our local community overall. You'll find local business owners are generally more knowledgeable, provide better service, and even know their customers by name. Marshalltown Area Chamber of Commerce exists to be an advocate for our business community. Membership in the chamber benefits your business and adds to the strength of our advocacy efforts. For more information on shopping locally and chamber membership, go to Marshalltown and we're back at halftime you're looking at the brett umpton pep band there for the marshalltown pep band uh, now it's time for the ken transmission halftime adjustment brandon what's your adjustment well you, you can't commit 12 turnovers in a half no. And, uh, you know, that's what really did the Bobcats in in that first uh, half of action was the turnovers. So they got to clean that up. They did a nice job of breaking the press, but then what are you going to do with it after that? They only made one field goal in the first half. Got to get the bucket in the hoop. And that is the stats and halftime adjustments presented by Ken's Transmission, your family-owned transmission experts. Back with the second half. Ever seen what it takes to fix a transmission? It takes a lot of patience, a lot of experience, and a whole lot of talent. At Ken's Transmission, they have all the above. Family owned and operated with over 62 years of experience in all areas of transmission. Keeping your vehicle shifting smoothly and routine maintenance, repair and replacement, including automatic and manual. For reputable service you can trust, Ken's Transmission. Ken's Transmission at 306 East Anson Street in Marshalltown is a proud sponsor of the Marshalltown Bobcats. There's a city within a city not far from here. The city includes a beautiful apartment building with indoor parking, a chapel, a movie theater, a swimming pool, exercise and recreational facilities, putting greens, and more. The city isn't really a city, but it is a wonderful place to live. Make friends and live your best life. It's the Embers Retirement Community in Marshalltown. The Embers provides security, independence, and companionship. Beautiful grounds outside and lovely studio, one- and two-bedroom apartments inside. See it for yourself. The Embers in Marshalltown. Why choose Marshtown Community College for your education? A quality education. Hands-on career training. Convenient on-campus living. One-on-one -on -one attention from my instructors. Earning my AA degree and transferring to university all while saving money. Why was MCC the right choice for me? The great student activities and the friends I met. Two convenient locations and the option to take online classes. The right choice is MCC. 
Bobcats, it's Amaya Moore, number 13, and you're watching Bobcat Basketball on KFJB TV. Yeah, we're getting ready here for the second half. It'll be, it'll be Dodgers ball with Mia Michaela passing in to Mackenzie Mack. Who's on the mound for the Dodgers? The Dodgers, it's not Trevor Bauer. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, and, and other news, <laughs> it's Michaela McElrath down to LJ Mayo, <laughs> to Peyton Hively, down to Laney Mayo, Mayo, LJ Mayo gets it, and now I'm going to take a breath here for a second because I got myself on that one. Oh, man, uh, just about 30 seconds in this first half as uh, Borsch is over into the front court as Dylan recovers here. Drop down underneath. Oh, nice play for Huffman, but just could not convert on the layup opportunity. Thank you, Brandon. LJ Mayo gets it up, kicks it ahead to her sister Laney Mayo. Back to McElrath. Cross court to McCaleb, down into the short corner. LJ Mayo gets it to Peyton Hively, gets too far under. Nice defense by Hughes to push Hively underneath. And now Bobcats got to run. The biggest thing is if they can set up their offense or get into the paint before Hively gets down, it's a good thing. Awesome play. Sydney Capayu just took Laney Mail to the rack and scored. It's 8 to 24. Great take by the freshman. More of that. Just more of that. Yeah, basketball's a pretty easy game. Yeah. Put it in the hole. Laney Mail off the glass, no good. Capayu. One thing Capeyu likes to do, she'll grab the rebound, but then she wants to make physical, physical contact with the nearest person. Huffman takes McElrath in and uh, throws up a wild shot, no good. Huffman wants the ball and just kind of standing there as Murphy implores her to come back down. And it then becomes a five-on-four run, and that's going to be Laney McElrath, or Laney Males, I believe her ninth point on the night. It's always difficult when you play with sisters of who who made what shot. Yeah, no kidding. McElroy, or Capayu goes behind the back dribble and I'll, throws it away to Hively who tips it away. And I guess that's all legal dribbling. And Hively gets it off the glass no good. Hughes gets a rebound. Bobcats have to look to run when they have it in transition. Gets it up to Huffman. Huffman gets it off the glass no oh, good. Wow, no call blocked by McCaleb and she's got she's got McElrath wide open but couldn't get it to her and it's going to be a timeout by Fort Dodge we'll take it with them Bobcats down 26-8 on KFJB TV in your home is power power to remodel your home take a memorable vacation at a deck or patio Lennox Employees Credit Union can help you unleash the financial power you possess with a home equity loan consolidate debt fund a student loan or pay for a wedding home equity loans are as low as 5.74 percent for a five-year fixed rate loan the loan process is easy see Lennox Employees Credit Union 1004 East Main Street in Marshalltown member NCUA equal housing lender online at LennoxECU.com Hey, Bobcat fans, I'm Georgia Jansen, and you're watching KFJB TV. Thank you to freshman Georgia Jansen leading us in as Coach Brian Murphy is imploring his ladies down 26 to 8. They've done some good things here tonight, but then they're, they just take plays off where the intensity isn't there. Yeah, they really do, and it, it kind of baffles me because, you know, we've seen them work hard, but it's. I think it goes back to what we've seen. A lot of inconsistencies this year, and it's kind of learning how to be consistent. And yep. sometimes with that, it's not only shots and passing and rebounding, but it's also effort. Yeah, You know, you can't teach effort sometimes. It's either in you or it's not. And uh, right now, you know, they got it. You, you have to learn, especially at an early age, that, you know, you can't, Again, it's the effort. You can't teach you. You just got to, it's got to be a part of you. And right here, they do a nice job to break the press. Yeah, that's, you got to break that. Aniston Bohr should have been the pass there. Drop it down and Dodgers turn it over again. And I will tell you, Scott Messerly is not having a good day at the office. No, His team's not. up 18, but he is just incensed with effort and execution by the Dodgers. You know, the Bobcats have turned it over 14 times, but I don't think the Dodgers are that far behind. I feel like they've got eight turnovers at least yep. if not maybe close to 10. Capayu dribble drives gets down and bounces out to Georgia Jansen they're allowing a lot of physical play there gets it up to LJ Mayo but Maya Moore is able to get back oh my goodness got it to Laney Moore I thought Georgia had that in her sights but couldn't get it 
Well, Scott Messerly might have not all, liked all the turnovers, but I'm sure he liked that play right there. Yeah, yeah that that's the <clears throat> sweet salve of a bucket. And it's going to be a foul yeah. on Laney Mayo. Final score tonight, West Marshall tops AGWSR in girls basketball 53-33. So uh, the Trojans get one for Brooks. I'm happy for you, Brooks. It's been crush AGWSR week. Yep, it's, uh, I can co-sign that. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh boy. Just bad basketball across. It was, it was almost the rushing nesting doll of mistakes. They got it over, <laughs> almost got it, and then the next one they finally did it. Uh, wow, that might have been your greatest analogy ever. And that takes a lot because, folks, <laughs> I've got a lot of them. <laughs> Great job by Sydney to get back and get the jump ball. I haven't heard the word Russian nesting doll, and I don't know when. I mean, it's probably been 15 years, if not more. Uh, my analogies are like a <laughs> grandmother's uh, <laughs> antique closet. There's rushing nesting dolls and China. <laughs> Sydney Capayu guarded closely by L. J. Mayo, gets it back to Amaya, who swings it over to Aniston Borsch, takes it off the dribble, McElrath, but then uh. throws it away. 17 turnovers tonight for the Cats. Yeah, Bobcats averaged 30, almost 31 turnovers on the year, and Coach Murphy would say if he could change one stat, it's yeah. that one right there. Yeah. The Bobcats have not shot the ball at a high level. They've defended at a much better level this year, giving up just around 50 points a game. But you cannot score the basketball. Oh, my goodness, that's got to be a jump ball. Great yeah. job by Aniston Bors and then Georgia Jansen with the jump ball. Kinsley Bowie is going to come in for Aniston Borsch. Bobcats in a 2-3 zone. Georgia Jansen picks it off. That, again, Scott Messerly just frustrated with another turnover from the Dodgers. We've seen more turnovers than points for both teams here in the third quarter. Sarah Huffman gets past LJ Mail and is fouled by Peyton Hively. I'm telling you, Sarah's going to feel the Peyton Hively foul tomorrow. Yeah, I, I, she I think so. some wood. Yeah, for sure. But that's the one thing why it's so important that the Bobcats break the press to run because Hively wants to play in a slow half-court pace because she's sucking win right now. Huffman, her third free throw of the night is up, and it's no good. She stands at one out of three from the line. Sarah, reverse spin, free throw is up, and soft on the front of the iron, it goes in. She has her second point. Yeah, Bobcats have seven point, or five points from the line, four points from the field here tonight. Amaya Moore gets it down. LJ Mayo throws it, and it's going to be off at Laney Mayo. Bobcats are so close when they're crashing down because they're wanting to throw that bounce pass off the across the free throw line. Huffman guarded by McElrath. Huffman just sprints past her. Up to Amaya Moore. Amaya Moore goes in and oh. dog on it. It's that is you almost need a ball handler everywhere because you saw that that press is not a good press. No, and unfortunately, I don't know why. It's kind of an awkward spot to pick up your dribble when you're going in from the right wing, and unfortunately, 18 turnovers now. Does it feel like Amaya may not trust herself offensively? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, she does not. She feels more comfortable, I think, on the defensive end yes. of things, uh, but when she gets the ball in her hands on the offensive side, she's always looking to pass it to somebody else, and you can kind of read that. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's one of those things, it, it's like, I don't know if you just got to go home and dribble around for five hours straight every day until you get, like, the confidence built up that you can do this. But you have to be good with the ball in your hands. If, if not, it, it those kind of things are going to happen with those bad turnovers. Yeah, and, and Coach all, always talks about poise and intensity. Intensity equals defensive side. Poise is an offensive thing. And Bobcats steal it with Georgia Jansen. Oh, she got yeah, most she got of it going of, the right direction. LJ Mayo kind of stepped in and bumped it away from her and just got her off kilter, and she was trying to get it up to, to Huffman. But, again, just another really good play. Unfortunately, the Bobcats can't convert on it, but uh, just Georgia Jansen doing great things. She's turned turned them over, I think, twice now in the last 
three possessions. So. Yeah, she, she's been quite good here tonight. And you can see it with her out there. Like, you can see the freshman. You can see getting just that, that body poised down. But you can see, like, in your mind's eye, looking two years, three seasons ahead, she's going to be a really good both ways player. Oh, good job by Sydney. Not much else you can do right there. She's going to pick up the fouls. Highly puts in a little bit of a magical bucket right there. I don't know how she got that to go. But. It was about a two-handed hook off the glass. <laughs> <laughs> and she took uh, she took some beating, and she was able to get it off the glass. The free throws up, and it's going to be good. And that's going to be nine, eight points on the night for Peyton Hively. And the Bobcats turn it over quickly with Laney Mayo. Gets it down to McCaleb. McCaleb off the glass. Huffman wants the call but doesn't get it. And then they get it across. I like, oh, my goodness gracious. It's the same. It's it's not. It's the same stuff. You've got to anticipate. Hively's crashing back there. Yeah. Attack her with the ball. Hively off the glass against Capello. Capello was able to root her out enough. Rips it away from Georgia Jansen and puts it in. Peyton Hively's got a mean streak in her. She's got the tattoo on the top of her kneecap. It says 2004. I assume that's the year she was born. And she is, she's tough. It's a good eye there. I didn't bring my binocular, binoculars, so I didn't see that. Capeyu takes it down, gets cut off, swings it back to Amaya Moore. Amaya Moore dribbles it back to the top of the key, guarded by Palmer. Now Huffman guarded by McCaleb, takes it to the rack off the glass, no good. They're going to say the call was on the ground. So are you saying if you have a tattoo, you're tough? Is that I, I'm kind of putting two and two together there. That's the only way anyone would call me tough, so I tried <laughs> to slide that in there, and then I was going to say how that I had a few tattoos Having later. a tattoo is an indicator of toughness. Let's see. Uh, well, Zach doesn't have a tat, it, but he see, acts tough. My, my theory holds <laughs> true. You got how many tats? No, no tats for Zach. Keith Stewart has a flaming eagle on his back. <laughs> it's true. Screaming Eagle. That's right. Sarah <laughs> Huffman gets it to Ellie Hughes, top of the key, guarded by Hively. Gets it back to he Huffman, and Huffman's knocked through, but really that's a good no call. McElrath left-handed layup, good. Again, these last two minutes of the quarters have been cyanide to the Bobcats. Hmm. Not good whatsoever. Hugh oh. oh, my gosh. Hughes just throws it right at Hively. 25 turnovers now. Yeah, and it's just... And this is if there's patience and poise, these are buckets. McElrath lines up a three, and there it goes. Hard to believe, uh, you know, she didn't have a bucket in the first half, but five here in the second half. Back-to-back -back buckets for McElrath, 30 seconds to go, 40-9. to nine. Yeah. As, again, these last two minutes of the quarters, Bobcats have just really, really struggled. Hughes gets it to the cutting. Huffman, Huffman off the glass. There Great go. cut. Like that. First field goal for Huffman tonight, though. She's got four to lead the Bobcats as Palmer gets it inside to Hively. That's an offensive call. Yeah, just ran around. That's tough, though. That's, that's tattoo tough, Dylan. I'm going to Canton in March. I'm going to Canton in March, and I'll see uh, the Pro Football Hall of Fame there. Yeah, and if everyone has a tat, you know they were tough. That's right. That's well, why they were in the Hall of Fame. That's right. It's actually that's the only way you get into the Hall of Fame. <laughs> but I do Does figure Does Kyle Martin have a tattoo? <laughs> it's of something nice like a quill and ink. I know Ken Hugie had a tattoo. He's tough. Yes, he is. Oh my god. Oh boy. Bobcats turn 26. it over again. Drop it down to LJ Mail. No good. They're gonna count that. Oh, they are. And they're going to say it's good. Old Man River called it back there. All righty, that'll do it for the end of the third. 42-11, Fort Dodge on a huge roll. Marshalltown knows competition. We started forging trowels in 1890 and evolved into manufacturing tools for masonry, drywall, concrete, flooring, tile, paint, and more. Today, we're still going strong. Marshalltown strong. 
As a worldwide leader in manufacturing, we crush the competition. We believe in our community and are proud to support Bobcat Athletics. Hey, Bobcat Nation. This is Hannah Norton. I'm a post, and you're watching KFJB TV. And we're back here, Bobcats, with Coach Murphy really just kind of coaching hot, but also I think he, he's bringing some animation because yeah. Bobcats at the end of those quarters have really been sloppy. Well, they committed their 26th turnover with three seconds to go, and then they counted the bucket, and, you know, it's just one of those things where, yeah, it just piles up in a quick, fast hurry, and if you don't do anything about it, but I, I just feel like, you know, I looked at Sarah Huffman here tonight, and you're right, I, you hate to call out individual players like that, especially at the high school level, but the, the the effort has been a little bit inconsistent, and right yep. there she's going to pick up a moving screen at a foul. No, they're going to they're going to call it on uh, McElrath. Oh, okay. It's going to be on Mackenzie okay. McElrath. I thought uh, that was a moving screen, but well, I, and I think it's and I think the frustration with some of those twenty six turnovers, at least six to eight of them, have been where the Bobcats had the advantage. Yeah, a two on one, a three yep. on two, and Sarah Huffman just puts her head down and yeah. takes it right to Mackenzie McElrath. Yeah, that's a good that's a good play to bounce back there. I know maybe things have been a little bit tough and I'm sure that always factors into things. You know, when you feel like you're not I guess the biggest thing I notice from a game like this when you have 26 turnovers, it's like there's no flow. No flow. You know, and so I, th I know that makes it tough for everybody out there too. It's going to be a jump ball and it's going to go to the Dodgers. For the Dodgers, it's Laney and LJ Mayo out there along with Mackenzie Mackenzie McElrath. It's going to be Brooklyn Palmer and number three, Morgan Bodhold. Laney Mayo winds up for the three in the corner, but no good. And Sarah or Sydney Capayu, she has been a monster on the glass. That is her seventh or eighth rebound here tonight, and she will be shooting a one-on-one. -on -one. And we're going to do a regional scoreboard update brought to you by Central State Bank. Discover what Central State Bank can do for you. Locations in Ames, State Center, and West Des Moines. Brandon. Well, PCM comes from behind. A little bit uh, of a win by 143-42. They take down Newton tonight. And West Marshall, 53-33 over AGWSR final there as well. Oh, my we goodness. We still have seven and a half minutes in the girls' game in this one. Yeah, Bobcats already shooting free throws. First one was up and no good on the one and one, and it was went out of bounds. And they say it's Dodger basketball. And the three by L.J. Mail. Yep, we get to see her for three more years. The freshman knocks down a big triple. She's got that real long drawn out three, but it's a good pure shot, and the Bobcats get to turn it over again. And the foul's going to, Bobcats turn it over again and trying to break that press. And uh, it's going to end up being a foul on Ellie Hughes. It really is. With LJ Mayo, it is a longer shot, but the one positive is it never goes below her shoulders. Oh, yeah, yeah, it, for sure. It's kind of an erector set from the shoulders up. Palmer looking inside, reverses over to L.J. Mayo. The freshman kicks it back over to Palmer. Palmer looks inside, knocked away by Sidney Capayu. Here comes Anderson Borsch. As the Dodgers are able to get back, Amaya Moore has it, looks inside to Sidney, but it ends up kicking it out to Huffman. Huffman, straight line drive, a Trey Young runner, a lot of contact, no call. 45-11, Bobcats down big here in the fourth. Kick out to Bodholt. Tim Wakefield from the corner, no good as the knuckleball yeah, didn't that, make that it. Yeah, no movement. Yeah, it, it literally was almost like an old uh, animation where it's that stopgap animation. <laughs> Gets it to Huffman <laughs> in the corner. <laughs> Just seeing if you're I can get you to, to giggle. You're trying to get yourself to giggle tonight, too. That's right. <laughs> hey, if you make yourself laugh, you're having a good night. That's true. Dodgers yeah. get the ball, and here come <laughs> Fort Dodge. Fort Dodge gets it up to Laney. Laney gets it off the glass. No good, but Sydney makes sure she's going to the line for two. Laney Mayo here, the senior. Senior related to Jeff Mayo. It was a pretty good wide receiver for the Oregon Ducks. See what you're bringing. Deep knowledge. Deep, deep knowledge. knowledge. Probably about 10, 10 years ago for sure, if not longer. 
Mayo gets the first one to go. Mayo had 19 the other night against uh, Des Moines North as they knocked off the number 12 Polar Bears. Second one is up, and it's pure. She gets her sixth point of the third quarter. She has 13 on the night to lead all scores. 47-11, Huffman gets it to Amaya Moore. Amaya Moore taking it against Laney Mayo. Nice dribble drive by Capay who gets it. Back iron no good. Ripped away, and here comes LJ Mayo. Gets a little scoop down to, down to Hively. Hively gets it up off the iron no good. Nice defense by Amaya Moore and the help defense from Sydney Capayu. 5.33 left to go here at Marshalltown Roundhouse here at George Funk Court. Off the glass, nice dime by Sarah Huffman for Amaya Moore. Good job, Amaya with three points now in the game. Kinsley Bowie guarding LJ Mayo closely, kicks it out, able to kick it out to Michaela. Michaela jump shot. Oh, my goodness, for averaging two, she's got nine. She's been a bright spot for the Dodgers tonight. Huffman, as the Dodgers have gone to a half-court man-to-man defense, gets a pick from Bowie, but now picks up her dribble, gets it back to Bowie. Bowie now has to track it down as it was knocked away by Mackenzie McElrath. 14 left on the shot clock as Bowie gets them into the offense, picks up her dribble, Huffman comes to the basketball, guarded closely by McCaleb. Four seconds, gets it into the lane, knocked away, and here come the Dodgers with the basketball, uh, and they're going to say play on. Uh, and now that, tr- yeah, that you can't. Yeah, thank you for no. stopping play and resetting there. That you can't, you can't let that happen as an official. Yeah, they're going to end up dead balling it. Having a referees having a conversation, you know, if we were names, we'd know this gentleman's name. Yeah, or we'd at least know we'd well, have an option crew, of three. The crew, it, it was the crew that does it. Yes, a, that's a great crew. Yes, that crew, it, that crew was a, absolutely very good. It was high professional yep. crew. We know they were from Clive, Waukee, <laughs> Waukee, and, and Urbandale. Johnst- Urbandale. That's I think right. It, was Urbandale, it yeah. was, it was Urbandale. Yeah, I'm trying to think of their names, but I can't. Mackenzie. Gets it across, Hively, top of the key, dribble drive, guarded by Amaya Moore. Again in that 1-2-2 zone defense with Amore on the top. Huffman and Kinsley Bowie playing the guard position on that defense. And Anderson Borsch is going to come in with 3.31 left to go in for Sarah Huffman. I know we talk usually about this when she's in the game, but Kinsley Bowie, just you can tell, she's going to be a very good player mm-hmm. when she, she really – Continues to get more minutes and plays more, and and, and uh, going to be called inside on the Bobcats on Georgia Chanson. But you know, as she gets more minutes, you can already see she's a good shooter. Yep, she knows how to play defense, where to yep. be right there. She pokes that one away. You know, good, good job. It's just getting her teammates, you know, around her to gel more and get that experience. Maybe put on a little bit more height, but. It has all the makings in that freshman class of a really, really good team in the next couple of years. I, I was thinking of that actually this afternoon, just thinking through, through the lineups of as Hively makes both free throws. Uh, is this is going to be Bobcat fans as you're watching or listening on the radio here tonight? This is your Bobcat team next year. There is not a senior on this roster. Yeah, and much of this roster are sophomores or below. I thought we should have a running clock here tonight in the fourth quarter. 35-point lead or more. You have a running clock. Not tonight at George Funk Court as it's 51-13. to 13. This is a really a bit of a misleading score. Yes, the Dodgers have turned the Bobcats over a lot as Anderson Borsch is able to make a free throw. Her first point of the night after having eight Friday night in Waterloo East is Bobcats had a ton of ton of opportunities and just could not convert here tonight second one is missed and it's going to be off of Sydney Capayu and with we now have that running clock that Brandon Lewis talked about you know what you put it out there the universe does magical things people listen that's right as a new players in as Christian Wakoff comes in for the Fort Dodge Dodgers 
The 5'9 senior will go to the line with a one and one as Anderson Borsch picks up her first foul. So for the Dodgers, it is Wacoff. It is Brooklyn Palmer not to be outdone. There's also a Dakota Palmer and Morgan Bodhold as well as Wacoff makes the first free throw. Second one is no good. Rebound, Georgia Jansen. And also in number 15, Eden Whitham for Fort Dodge. Kinsley Bowie, straight line drive, got bumped all the way down. If this was a bowl contest, she rode her eight seconds all the way down the lane. But the Bobcats find themselves at the line. It's going to be the third foul on Morgan Bodhold. Great shot tonight by Keith Stewart. Shot is up and back iron no good. And it's going to be a jump ball. It's going to stay with the Bobcats. Looks like we're going to have a pretty good Fort Dodge crowd here tonight for the men's game yeah, coming up after this. How we never love the trip to Fort Dodge. Think about Fort Dodge. they got to make the trip to everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> well, half, oh. your, half your trip is just to get on to Highway 20 <laughs> in Fort Dodge. Yeah, or for them to get on I-35. As get it inside as Dakota Palmer gets it inside. Bothole gets it. Ripped away by Sidney Capeu. And I apologize, that was Dakota Palmer. Eden Whittam's going to pass it in from underneath. The sophomore 5'5 five, five guard gets it out to Bothole. Bothole. Left-handed three off the glass, no good. Here comes Anderson Borsch, 133 left to go in this ball game. Bobcats down big, 52-14. Borsch gets it to Bowie in the corner. Dribbles it back out to the top. Georgia Jansen says, see the three, be the three off the back iron, no good. Now bank Borsch. is closed today. It's Martin Luther King Jr. Day. That is right. That and the Iowa Heartland Habitat for Humanity offices, because I had the day off, my friend. I feel pr I'm pretty happy about it. I feel like your energy level for my day off is not that high. Nope. I had to work today. <laughs> the voice of Kicks 101.1, Brandon Lewis. Sidney Capayu gets it <laughs> off the glass, no good. Georgia Jansen's able to get the offensive rebound. Oh, Ni oh my. Oh, out of her Nikes goodness. And then turned it over. She, she got Dakota Palmer leaning but couldn't finish. Oh, we have an injury. And uh -oh. it's a knee issue. It's a knee. That's terrible to see. Chris and Wakeoff, we're going to take a break with yeah. them. Hopefully she's okay. Bobcats down 52, 14, 43 seconds to go. And save for your child to go to college. The medical school after graduation was a surprise, a happy, expensive surprise. Wells Fargo Advisors can help. For more than 125 years, we've created wealth management and investment strategies aimed at achieving our clients' personal financial goals. When opportunities surprise you, turn to Wells Fargo Advisors. Together, we'll go far. Wells Fargo Advisors is located at 14 East South Ridge Road in Marshalltown. Call them at 641-752-5401. They're a member SIPC. Hey, Bobcat fans, it's L. Hughes, 21, and this is Bobcat Basketball on KJB TV. And we're back. We still have a player down. We'll be right back here on KJB TV. Never have to wait after ordering new appliances. At Penn Appliance, you wouldn't. With an incredible selection in stock and ready to install today, our friendly team is here to help you pick the perfect set to match your style. And let our professional technicians install and set up your new appliances, often delivering the very next day. Stop in today, see all the new features, and find your new look at Pence Appliance. For sales and service of everything appliance, go see the Pence team. Hey, Bobcat Nation, this is Aubrey Tejada, number 10. You are watching Bobcat Basketball on KFJB TV. And we're back, and Kristen Wake up. Kirsten Wakeoff is able to walk off. She looked like that seems to be a lot better than what initially. She yeah. just kind of crumpled to the court already wearing a couple of those knee braces, but mm -hmm. she, good smile on her face as it came off. Yeah, I don't know if it was just popped it out of place, that kind of thing, and I have to pop it back in, but... Yeah, unfortunate right there. Glad that she is able to walk off on her own. McElrath gets dribble drive guarded by Borsch as Palmer off the glass, no good. Going to be rebounded by Butthold. Butthold 
is going to Bodhold's going to be at the line for two. <laughs> Two shots for Morgan Bodholt. She averages about a half a point a game. Shoots 50% from the free throw line. Back iron, no good. Second one, Bobcats down 52-14. Bodholt shoots it up. Second one is up and good. True to her 50% free throw percentage. Bobcats 50, 14, Dodgers 53. Borsch picks up the pass, gets cutting. Kinsley Bowie, reverse layup blocked by McElrath. And here comes Dakota Palmer. And the Dodgers gets past Borsch. A little Trey Young teardrop, and it's going to be a charge with 15.8 seconds to go. Welcome back, big, Mr. Lewis. You're a big fan of Trey Young, huh? He's got the Trey Young teardrop. It's a known play. If you watch the NBA. Which I do. Yeah. I know Zach does. Zach is the fun time Rockets fan. <laughs> fun time Rockets fan. As Borsch gets it, and that's going to be tipped away. Four seconds to go, three seconds. McElrath gets it up to Bodhold. Bodhold, they're going to clean it out. It's 53 14, and that'll do it. We'll be right back with the stats and with the regional scoreboard update. You're watching Bobcat Basketball here on News Talk 1230 K. Furniture and Mattress has your mattress. Every firmness, comfort, and support level, each at a great price. Make the investment today for a good night's sleep for years to come. The Gregors also has quality furniture for every room in your home. Beautiful, comfortable sofas, recliners, dinette sets, and office furniture to help you work and relax in comfort and style. McGregor's Furniture is proud to bring you quality furniture and great service, and they are proud to support Bobcat Athletics. McGregor's Furniture and Mattress, downtown Marshalltown, open seven days a week. Golf doesn't end when the weather gets cold at Wandering Creek Golf Club in Marshalltown with their two full swing simulators. Anything you can do at an outdoor golf course, you can do at their indoor golf simulators with 80 plus golf courses to choose from. Wandering Creek has numerous indoor golf tournaments this winter, so check their website for dates and details at wanderingcreekgolf.com. You could also save with special discounts for online bookings. Make a full day of it with golf, food, and your favorite beverage at Wandering Creek Golf Club. Don't let concerns about current events derail your long-term financial strategy. Edward Jones Financial Advisor Zach Wall can help. He'll work with you to understand today's financial landscape and how to be positioned for the long term. Edward Jones can give you the tools for a reasoned, disciplined approach to investing. Call Zach Wall at 641-752-3017 in Marshalltown or online at edwardjones.com. Edward Jones, member SIPC. Your home is the one place where everything should be perfect, including your air. Capon & Brown helps you achieve the perfect air you deserve with reliable, groundbreaking, award-winning Lennox products. Call Capon & Brown to hear more about how they can help you feel healthier and happier in your home. It doesn't get any more perfect than that. Call them today at 641-753-3563 or visit them online at CaponAndBrownInc.com, your local premier Lennox dealer, where quality has been a promise for 40 Eight years. Coming up, post game statistics, a check of the area scoreboard, and post game reaction. The Locker Room Report on KFJB TV, presented by Wells Fargo Advisors of Marshalltown. Welcome back to the Locker Room Report. Bobcats fall to 2 and 12 as they lose to the Fort Dodge Dodgers, 8 and 4, 53 to 14. Fort Dodge led by Laney and L.J. Mayo combining for 23 points. Bobcats led by Sarah Huffman's four. We will be back with the regional scoreboard update as we continue on in the locker room report here on KFJB-TV. And save for your child to go to college. But medical school after graduation was a surprise, a happy, expensive surprise. Wells Fargo Advisors can help. For more than 125 years, we've created wealth management and investment strategies aimed at achieving our clients' personal financial goals. When opportunities surprise you, turn to Wells Fargo Advisors. Together, we'll go far. Wells Fargo Advisors is located at 14 East South Ridge Road in Marshalltown. Call them at 641-752-5401. They're a member SIPC. 
At Sports Plus Sports Medicine and Physical Therapy Center, we customize each patient's treatment plan to their individual needs. What does that mean? It means that not every back or knee problem is treated the same and that your program will be unique and designed especially for your needs or problems. This improves how quickly you will return to work or sports. The Sports Plus staff is encouraging and takes pride in your successful recovery. This is just one more reason why champions choose Sports Plus Physical Therapy as their favorite place to rehabilitate and train. Since 1967, Jensen Ford Lincoln has served generations of families around Central Iowa. Quality vehicles, professional service, knowledge of our product, that's a part of Jensen. But what's more important to us is a trust that is passed down from every generation. Jensen Ford Lincoln wants to serve your family. We want to be there for your first car, we want to be there for your family SUV, and we want to see you drive away in the Mustang you always dreamed of. At Jensen, we want to be here for you now and every mile along the way. How can you help Marshalltown High School and enjoy a mouth-watering burger at the same time? By ordering the Bobcat Burger at Legends American Grill. Two quarter-pound patties with crisp bacon strips, sautéed onions and melted American cheddar, jack and Swiss cheeses on top of fresh shredded lettuce on a toasted bun. It's absolutely delicious. One dollar from every Bobcat Burger sold is donated by Legends to Marshalltown High School activities. So, enjoy a Bobcat Burger and help MHS. The Bobcat Burger, another exclusive from Legends American and grill in Marshalltown. And welcome back. As we're in the locker room report, now it's time for a regional scoreboard update brought to you by Central State Bank. Discover what Central State Bank can do for you. Locations in Ames State Center and West Des Moines. West Marshall tops AGWSR 53-33 in girls basketball. Also PCM and a nail-biter. They win it at the end 43-42 over Newton. Coming up, it is the boys countdown to tip off as we transition into the boys game between the Dodgers and the Bobcats right here on your home for the Cats. It's News Talk 1230 KFJB AM 93.9 FM and right here on KFJB TV. Today's world, you are what you put on social media. If you don't believe me, go check out Calvin Rocket on Facebook. Not only will you find enticing pictures of delicious specials and favorite menu items, you'll also see a whole lot of Bobcat pride. From football to fine arts and everything in between, Calvin Rocket is always sharing what makes them proud to be Bobcats. Keep up to date with Calvin Rocket specials and events at Facebook.com slash Calvin Rocket Marshalltown. Share the pride and don't forget to share the cheese curds. You planned and saved for your child to go to college. But medical school after graduation was a surprise. A happy, expensive surprise. Wells Fargo Advisors can help. For more than 125 years, we've created wealth management and investment strategies aimed at achieving our clients' personal financial goals. When opportunities surprise you, turn to Wells Fargo Advisors. Together, we'll go far. Wells Fargo Advisors is located at 14 East South Ridge Road in Marshalltown. Call them at 641-752-5401. They're a member SIPC. Small businesses are the backbone of our community. Marshalltown Area Chamber of Commerce reminds you that when you shop locally, you are benefiting members of our community and adding to our local community overall. You'll find local business owners are generally more knowledgeable, provide better service, and even know their customers by name. Marshalltown Area Chamber of Commerce exists to be an advocate for our business community. Membership in the chamber benefits your business and adds to the strength of our advocacy efforts. For more information on shopping locally and chamber membership, go to Marshall. Org. The equity in your home is power. Power to remodel your home. Take a memorable vacation. Add a deck or patio. Lennox Employees Credit Union can help you unleash the financial power you possess with a home equity loan. Consolidate debt, fund a student loan, or pay for a wedding. Home equity loans are as low as 5.74% for a five-year fixed rate loan. The loan process is easy. See Lennox Employees Credit Union, 1004 East Main Street in Marshalltown. Member NCUA, Equal Housing Lender. Online at LennoxECU.com. Welcome to the Countdown to Tip-Off. Welcome in on a Monday night from the Roundhouse in Marshalltown. Dylan, Bobcats on a two-game losing streak. They got to turn it around against the Fort Dodge Dodgers who are on a seven-game losing streak. Yeah, really do. It really comes down to roster consistency. Who's going to be playing for the Bobcats? Do we have the same lineups? Who? What's our identity right now? Yeah, 
Yeah, we'll find out here tonight. We've got a lot coming up, including a chat with a coach as we roll along in the, lo- in the uh, countdown to tip-off right here on your home for the Cats, KFJB-TV. Marshalltown knows competition. We started forging trowels in 1890 and evolved into manufacturing tools for masonry, drywall, concrete, flooring, tile, paint, and more. Today, we're still going strong. Marshalltown strong. As a worldwide leader in manufacturing, we crush the competition. We believe in our community and are proud to support Bobcat Athletics. Step for our key area opponent matchups here on the countdown to tip off on KFJB and KFJB TV. I'm brought to you by Brown Shoe Fit. What are we looking at here on a Monday night? It's a light schedule here tonight, but if you look at Central Iowa, some smaller school matchups. You have Woodward Academy is taking on Collins Maxwell tonight. Meskwaki Settlement is at South Tama, and then West Marshall is battling AGWSR. Looking forward to all those. We'll keep you up to date as the night goes along. That is your key area opponent matchup. So brought to you by Brown Shoe Fit, Marshalltown, right here on the countdown to tip off on KFJB. Shoe Fit in Marshalltown, you can find the right shoe for every occasion with a wide variety of top quality brands. Brown Shoe Fit carries the finest in footwear for both men and women with a large selection of athletic, dress, comfort, work boots, and European footwear, carrying multiple sizes and widths to ensure the best fit for you. Their expert, friendly staff is available to give you a personalized experience and find the right shoe for your needs. Stop in today at Brown Shoe Fit, 10 East Main Street in downtown Marshalltown. You're locked into the countdown to tip off here on KFJB and KFJB TV. I'm Brandon Lewis, still in Dose alongside me here tonight. All right, scouting report all brought to you by Bruin Manufacturing. What do we need to know about the Dodgers tonight, Dylan? JV on Jondal. Yeah. You heard his name during football. He destroyed us up and down the field. Basketball court, 16 points a game, almost eight rebounds. For Coach Willie Williams, he's really the one that makes them go. Yeah. But they've really struggled all year long. They give up about 20 more points than they score, giving up in the mid-60s, scoring in the mid-40s. Unless Javion just has a stellar game, it's going to be tough sledding for Willie Williams and the Fort Dodge Dodgers. Yeah, we'll see how everything plays out tonight on George Funk Court. That is our scouting report. All brought to you by Bruin Manufacturing in Marshalltown. Coming up next, we'll talk to Coach on our countdown to tip-off right here on KFJB and KFJB-TV. Manufacturing is a family-owned and operated business founded in Marshalltown, Iowa, and we have a unique approach to plastic injection moldings with our own custom in-house tool shop. Since 1949, Bruin Manufacturing has provided injection molded plastic parts for construction, industrial, agriculture, medical, sports, and recreational purposes. We are an industry-leading manufacturer of precision plastic components. To learn more about Bruin Manufacturing, visit our website at BruinMFG.com. Bruin Manufacturing is a proud sponsor of the Marshalltown Bobcats. Back in on the countdown to tip off right here on News Talk 1230, KFJB AM 93.9 FM, and as well as KFJB TV. I'm Brandon Lewis, now joined by head coach Michael Apple and her Iowa Kitchen Company pregame chat here on the countdown to tip off. Coach, you come off a loss on Friday night, a little bit of a heartbreaker at Waterloo East. Of course, a two game losing streak, drop one right inside the uh, roundhouse to Hoover last week. What are you looking out of your guys to bounce back here tonight? You know, I thought our effort was great, you know, on Friday against the good Waterloo East team. So um, just a few plays here and there, and and we were right there. So just looking for that same effort, consistent effort we gave, you know, not only on Friday but on Tuesday as well. So just uh, if we can string together that that, that effort, you know, that's going to be great. You know, that's, a, that's the one thing we talked about a little bit on Friday night, just the effort that your guys are giving, going through this a little bit at adversity. You talked about it making your team stronger. I guess, you know, over the weekend you've had a little bit of time to think about it. Just how, how much of this core, this group, maybe some leaders, is there a guy kind of really making this team gel right now? Well, I, I don't think it's just one single person. I, just, I think our guys really enjoy being around each other. Um, we practiced Sunday, and I thought it was probably one of the best practices that we've had in a long time, uh, just how hard we've practiced, um, attention to detail. You could tell they were focused and wanted to be there. Um, so those are all good signs when, when, when things are happening like that. 
you know, a guy that we saw on the football field, JV Anjondo, really tore things up and led them to a victory over the Marshalltown Bobcats. He is a threat on the basketball court, but maybe not as much as on the football court, but he's still one of those guys. He's a tall presence, and he's really kind of the go-to guy for them offensively, right? They are, yeah. He, he's going he's gonna to create everything they're doing, um, just his athletic ability, his his. You know he can get to the rim. He's you know he's 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 just a good athlete. So we got to understand that's that's kind of a key focus on on understand they're going to run everything through him and try and try and make it tough for him. Of course, uh, coming into the the night, uh, we we saw Drake Capayu, our player of the week last week. He's really been on fire lately on the defensive side and on the offensive side. His game coming together in both of those aspects has got to be huge for you, right? It is. You know he he's he's a guy that has the you know he he can score it, and and we just have been telling him we need you to be more aggressive. You can you know you just look for your shot more. Uh, our guys, you know, find him, find him in the right spots, understand when he's hot. Um, so we're starting to do a lot better job with that. Yeah, sure. certainly. Treshawn Brooks also coming to the forefront with his aggressive week has uh, proved pivotal too. Final question for you: Key to victory here tonight against the Dodgers. Just consistently play hard, play play hard like we we did on Friday, and and um, rebound the ball is going to be huge. We've got to make sure we're rebounding it. Just taking good shots, understanding we don't need to fire it up right away if they're sitting in the zone. Be patient, working inside, get really good looks, and uh, and and go from there. Good luck. Yep. Thank you. All right. Dodgers, Bobcats coming up. That is our pregame chat with Coach Apple. All brought to you by Iowa Kitchen Company of Marshalltown. Let us design your dream space today with quality cabinetry and endless designs and styles to choose from. Lineups next right here on KFJB TV. Excellent service and lasting relationships are just a few things we are proud of at Iowa Kitchen Company. We value our customers, and when it comes to designing a new kitchen, bathroom, or office space, we want our customers to get the results they are looking for. We provide quality cabinetry, craftsmanship, and design with endless finishes and styles to choose from. Let Iowa Kitchen Company guide you through your next project. Visit our showroom today at 811 Iowa Avenue West in Marshalltown or visit our website at iowakitchenco.com. Back in on the countdown to tip off here on KFJB and KFJB TV. I'm Brandon Lewis, Dylan Dose alongside me. All right, Dylan, let's get to your what to watch here tonight, real quick. Bobcats, it's Trey all day. It's Trey Brooks. No Dalen, no, no way of how they're going to get the basketball. If Trey's got to handle it as he did in East and create off of him. When it comes to Fort Dodge, it's going to have to be the rivalry, rivalry. They have to buy into the rivalry because this is not a great Fort Dodge team, but I know something about Fort Dodge. They hate Marshalltown. <laughs> yeah, that is for sure. Tip-off is next right here on KFJB and KFJB TV. City within a city not far from here. The city includes a beautiful apartment building with indoor parking, a chapel, a movie theater, a swimming pool, exercise and recreational facilities, putting greens, and more. The city isn't really a city, but it is a wonderful place to live. Make friends and live your best life. It's the Embers Retirement Community in Marshalltown. The Embers provides security, independence, and companionship. Beautiful grounds outside and lovely studio, one- and two-bedroom apartments inside. See it for yourself. The Embers in Marshalltown. Finds Brooks. Brooks will take the three. Boy, that's a pure bucket right And backdoor pass to Weatherly. Beat numbers outline to red. Three again. Boys, he's hot. Beat down. They go right back to Capay. Three, drop it in. Ryan Murphy. Three, right wing. You're here for a blockbuster season. The home for Bobcat Athletics for 100 years. KFJB TV. It's your Marshalltown Bobcats and the Fort Dodge Dodgers tonight here on KFJB TV. Welcome inside the roundhouse as you see the starting lineups just about ready to get announced here for the 
Marshalltown Bobcats. All right, let's get you to the Dodgers starting lineup here tonight. It is number three, Cade Westerhoff. He's a sophomore at 6'1", averaging nearly 10 points per game and four rebounds per game. Number four, Carter Woodruff, averaging 4.7 points per game, a 5'7 sophomore. Number 14, Ty Adams, a 6'0 junior. Number 21, Kyron Wilson, a 6'2 senior. And then, as Dylan alluded to, J.B. Unjondel, number 23, averaging 16 points per game, a 6'3 senior. Last year, he had 18 and 14 against Marshalltown. Now for your Marshalltown Bobcats, it'll be Carter Gianetto. Of course, Carter Gianetto, a 5'10 junior, 7.6 points per game for the Cats. Treshawn Brooks, 9 points per game, a 6-foot junior. Braden Weatherly, heart hustle and muscle, 4 points per game, 2.9 rebounds per game, a 6'3 senior. Drake Capayu, he's really on fire. He was our Calvin Rocket Player of the Week last week, averaging 9 points per game. 3.7 3.7 rebounds and two assists and routing out the starting five for your Marshalltown Bobcats. It is Jackson Eisenbarth, four points per game, a 6-2 senior. You see the starting lineups here. Bobcats, I don't think you got to say a lot to them if you're Coach Apple. Get them fired up about this one tonight. Yeah, they're, they're going to be locked and loaded. What we saw Friday night didn't come out on the winning end, but they were locked in from the get-go. It'll be intriguing to see, does Capayu guard Jondal? Most. We'll yeah, giving up a little bit of height there, but that is a good matchup. You know, he's always faced him all season long. Treshawn Brooks might be another, yeah. you know, possibility there, but it could be like East. We saw them switching a lot on some of their, their top-level players. So I, I think that's where we see them the rest of the year, especially with Dalen Houston out right now. Uh, we'll find out in the next week or so how the rest of his season might look with that ankle injury, but... Uh, here tonight, we'll see Braden Weatherly, heart hustle and muscle to, yeah. to jump off against J.B. Unjondal at midcourt. Fort Dodger, they're all tops, black tops and bottoms. Bobcats in all white here tonight inside the roundhouse on George Funk Court. I'm Brandon Lewis, Dylan Dills along Sabi. Eight minutes on the clock. Here we go from the roundhouse as the Dodgers will get it into the backcourt and control the basketball from left to right on your radio dial and your TV screen here on KFJB TV as well as News Talk 1230 AM as well as FM 93.9. to three to open up the game by the Dodgers. It is no good. Giannetto went for the rebound. It's out of bounds over by the pet band, and it will remain with the Dodgers with 744 in the opening quarter. Yeah, so far, Capayu on Jondal, and then Cade Westerhoff is guarded by Trey Brooks. The officials giving 10 on this signal right there. I wasn't really sure exactly if they were resetting the shot clock or what. Looks like they are going to reset the shot clock. Jondal traveled walk. right there. He shuffled his feet. I don't know how you do not call that one, but... It is not called, and the Dodgers will keep the possession into the front court. Giannetto gives up a drive down to the right block. It is no good on the drive by Carter Woodruff, and back the other way as the Cats get the rebound with Eisenbarth. Giannetto over the midcourt stripe gives to Treshawn Brooks. Yeah, John Will's going to be guarding Brooks. This is an interesting matchup. Over to Giannetto, opens up far side corner, and a charge and a legal screen going to be called. As a block is going to be called on Eisenbarth, and that's first foul of the night. That's one thing, foul foul problems. You cannot have it. We are a very short bench, actually, with uh, Corey Smith's younger brother, Kyle Smith, as you were mentioning, up on varsity from the freshman squad. Into the front court, Woodruff thought about the three, but he will opt to pass it. Free throw line jumper, it is strong off the right side. Treshawn Brooks with the rebound, and then Weatherly hauls it in, tips it out to Treshawn Brooks up the near side. He'll cross over, knives in, left side, a little bit strong in the layup. It's no good. Dodgers with the rebound. We're still scoreless over a minute into this one. Fort Dodge, another jumper, the free throw stripe is no good. Giannetto with the rebound. Yeah, allow uh, Adams, allow the role players to shoot the basketball. Jondal has not touched it on the offensive end of the court. Yeah, surprising. Two Ty Adams jumpers right there, no good. Back door, they beat him. And Capayu dribbles off of his own shoe. Turnover, Jondal on the fast break by himself against Eisenbarth. Eisenbarth got a piece of it, but the layup is still good. I don't know how that thing went in, but it did. And it's Fort Dodge, two to nothing. Yeah, on one end, Drake Capayu did not need the dribble. And on the other end, Jondal using that athleticism to finish at the rim. Eisenbarth back door again to Capayu down low. He dribbles underneath the hoop. Back out right wing. Step in. Right high post. Hits pure and the jumper for Treshawn Brooks. We're tied at two. 
Yeah, Trey's got to be aggressive all night long. I'd love to see him just pulling up with that 13-footer. At midcourt right there, Woodruff is being backed off uh, the midcourt line by Giadetto. Here's Adams on the right wing doing a lot of dribbling against uh, Weatherly, but not doing anything with it. That's going to be five seconds closely guarded right there, but no call. I don't even think he was counting it. I don't think he was aware of the situation at all. Jondal almost tips, uh, turns it That's over. He wall. slides. That's going to be a turnover. And it is going to be a turnover on the Dodgers. And a timeout is taken by the Bobcats. We'll take it with them. Actually, no turnover. Dodgers keep the ball with four seconds on the shot clock. 529 first quarter. This is Bobcat basketball on KFJB and KFJB TV. The insurance agent can make all the difference. Assured Partners agents represent multiple insurance companies. They can pick and choose from a larger variety of outstanding insurance options. Assured Partners also handles life and health insurance and Medicare supplement coverage. With access to local, regional, and national insurance companies, Assured Partners will create policies tailored to the coverage you need. For more information, go online to assuredpartners.com slash Marshalltown. Power through partnership with Assured Partners in Marshalltown. Toledo and West Des Moines. Hey Cat fans, this is Aniston Bush, number 11. You are watching our Bobcat Basketball KFJV TV. 2-2 early on here in the boys game as 529 remains. It's four seconds on the shot clock as I don't know how, but the Dodgers, at least in my mind, turned it over twice right there on that possession, but no call was made, and the ball will stay with the Dodgers. They have four seconds on the shot clock. The timeout was uh, awarded to head coach Willie Williams, so they're going to have a quick shot here they're going to have to take here for the Dodgers. Yeah, see Capayu trying to isolate. They get it to Jondal, double-team him at the top of the key. Boy, an awkward-looking uh, three-point ball from straight on for John Dill, no good. A shot clock violation out of bounds on the air ball with 522 in the opening quarter of play. Treshawn Brooks will get it from the inbound man, and Giadano will bring it across the cat logo at midcourt. Swings a left wing to Eisenbarth, back to Treshawn Brooks' right wing. Now can pay you off of his screen. Top of the key, and it it's a three. It's good, and he continues his hot stretch over the last week as Capayu knocks down the three. Yeah, Drake has been aggressive for about the last two and a half weeks, and he's having some of his great, greatest offensive outputs of his career. Weatherly, a nice play inside defensively, kind of tipped that ball out of there. Treshawn Brooks looks like he rolls his ankle, and a push is going to be called on Drake Capayu, as that will be his... First foul of the night on the Bobcats. Hopefully, Treshawn Brooks is okay here as it looks like he's trying to walk off a little bit of an ankle roll right there. Second team foul here in the opening half of play. Yeah, that's the last thing the Bobcats need as Trey said he was okay, so looks to be good to go. Two Dodgers. Well, that's a travel. You lift the pivot foot right there out front, but no call right there again by Kyron Wilson. And the Dodgers keep it. 15 seconds on the shot clock. Good defense. John Dole right down the heart of the paint. And a... Going to call a hand check on Drake, I okay. believe. All right, so hand check on Drake Capayu, And that will send the Dodgers to the baseline for the inbounds. So and that's Drake's second yeah. foul. And Rogelio Sarin will check in as... Drake Capayu checks out. We take a look at that three he just made on the offensive side of things. What a great looking shot from straight on. He cut off the screen and dropped that one as Cats have the lead. Five to two with four and a half minutes to go. Just under four and a half minutes. Jondal answers back with a jumper from the right high post. It's good. And Jondal's got all four for Fort Dodge as the Cats lead it by one inside the, inside the roundhouse. Weatherly high screen, sets it for Brooks, cuts over to the left wing, passes near side corner to Giannetto, dribbles out of it. Now trying the paint, Weatherly open, three, and that one's going to be off the back of the iron. Three is no good. Dodgers with the rebound, outlet to John Dill. He'll bring it up the near side. He looked like he was going to go in the paint, but stops at the right high post as Weatherly steps in, and John Dill all six, and Dodgers have the first lead of the game, 6-5 with 3.45 to go in the opening quarter. Yeah, John Dill's able to get whatever he wants. He's too strong for Braden, and he's too big for others. Giannetto opens up a good pass, but the three is off the back of the iron from the far side corner. Outlet quickly up court That's of the Dodgers. Carry. Hesitation, yeah, you're right. Uh, carry and hesitation play, but a foul's going to be called on the Dodgers. Apparently, Eisenbarth. That's his second foul. Good night. 
four fouls in the Bobcats, none of the Dodgers early on. Yeah, it's been it's been an interesting turn of events so far, Bobcats. We will tell you that Treshawn Brooks was kicked out of the girls' game. He is playing here tonight. It was a, it, we were sure. We, we were sure, sure yeah, exactly was what was going to go up. on. And uh, from what we were told, it's all hearsay. But you know, it's one of those things where, yeah, you know, you go either way. You can't be too thin-skinned as an official. And there's the first foul of the night. A blocking foul, a legal screen on the Dodgers. Turnover. And back to the Bobcats. His foul comes in on Carter Woodruff. Yeah, what we know of Trey is a young man. He's not a guy who's going to be cursing out an official or anything. So it wasn't anything too egregious. No. And uh, every encounter I've had with Trey Sean Brooks has been respectful. And yep. Good kid, that's for sure. 6-5, Bobcats down by one. Treshawn down the paint, kicks out. Smith gets it, drives inside, kicks out. Giannetto wide open, top of the key. Three! Pours it in, and Giannetto gets a three to give the Bobcats back the lead by two. 8-6 inside the roundhouse. Yeah, everybody out there for the Bobcats can shoot it from deep. Everyone, everyone is a threat. Right wing, Giannetto steps in on Woodruff, who lost the basketball momentarily. Nice and now inside, Smith gets a nice block. Yeah, you're right, Dillip. Here go the Cats the other way as Brooks gets the outlet pass on the far sideline. Crossover, drives inside, and then pulls back out of the far side corner around the perimeter of the Bobcats go. Rogelio Serra, nice drive baseline, puts it off the glass, draws a foul. There you go, Rogelio. Getting yourself involved early on here. Two free throws for Rogelio who stands at one for two on the season at the free throw stripe. You love he took it aggressive. He had that corner. He can hit that corner three, but he went right to the left and took it hard to the rack. Back down on the other end, uh, that block turned uh, turned into offense for Rahelio Serra. And as you see that block by Smith right there, and then the Bobcats did a nice job to push it up court. And Rahelio Serra at the line for the first free throw, dropped that one in, and so the Bobcats extend their lead. 9-6, and now it's 10-6. So Rahelio Serrett coming in off the bench, making an impact here. The Bobcats putting a load of backcourt pressure and then fade back there once John Dill gets it. Yeah, I think they're going to play around with that pressure again, that more guard-heavy lineup for the Bobcats. Woodruff drives into the free-throw line, kicks it out left wing now, right wing dribbling over. It was Westerhoff. A little back and forth between those two guys. Now an inlet into Jondal. Right block turnaround jumper. Swiping at it was Brooks. Missed on it. And Jondal has all eight for the Dodgers here tonight. It's 10-8 your score. Cats into the front court with Brooks as he's over the center circle. I do like Brooks was guarding Jondal on that last one. I do like that matchup better. Smith a little wild with the dribble, but it's off the Dodgers. And out of bounds, baseline, left side. It will be for the Cats with 1.36 to go in the opening quarter of play. Yeah, Corey Smith's getting a little bit more run tonight again. No more, no Dalen Houston here tonight as he's still in the walking boot. Bobcats inbound it to Corey Smith, and Smith will dribble it uh, over and give it to Brooks. Brooks now with the top of the key, swings to Giannetto. Second three of the night is good as he gets it from the right wing, and Giannetto with six. It's 13-8, Cats on top. Yeah, four dodges in a two or three zone. Huge job by Trey to get it into the lane, suck that zone in, kick it out to a wide open Carter Giannetto for his second three. Giannetto defensively back to work against Woodruff. Now a jumper to Jondal as he got the feed from Woodruff, and it's good again. And if it weren't for Javion Jondal, it would be 13 to nothing. Bobcats on top here in the first quarter. Yeah, Javion's going to have to have 50, I think, tonight for there to be a chance. But he looks really good tonight. Smith, left wing. Now over to Giannetto. And to Brooks. Brooks, a little crossover, feeds out to Weatherly. Weatherly will drive baseline, puts nice it off take. the rack, and it's no good. It is a great take, though. Weatherly, you know, he wanted the three and then drove. Usually we see him either take the three or he kicks to somebody else, but a nice decisive play right there for Braden Weatherly. Now 20. Yeah, timeout could be, whoa, an illegal screen's going to be called. I thought a timeout 
coach uh, Willie Williams was called, you know, won the timeout right there, but before that happened, a legal screen as the foul's going to come in on Carter Woodruff, his second foul tonight. Yeah, Bobcats up 13-10. to 10. Now Rahelio Saren was guarding John Dold. Four different Bobcats have guarded him tonight. None have been able to slow him down. Brooks into the front, front court with eight seconds to go for the Bobcats here in this first quarter. Late feed, Rahelio Saren off the glass. There you go, Rahelio with four. And the Cats lead it 15-10 to 10 at the end of the first quarter Ooh. as a half court by John Dold is almost made. What a play. But we will head to the second quarter right here on KFJB and KFJB TV. Choose Marshtown Community College for your education. A quality education. Hands-on career training. Convenient on-campus living. One-on-one -on -one attention from my instructors. Earning my AA degree and transferring to university all while saving money. Why was MCC the right choice for me? The great student activities and the friends I met. Two convenient locations and the option to take online classes. The right choice is MCC. Hey Bobcat Nation, this is Braden Weatherly and you're watching Marshtown Basketball on KFJB TV. It's 15 to 10, Bobcats leading it with eight minutes to go in the second quarter as we get ready to go. Giannetto, his second three, you see there on KFJB TV. Great looking shot, he's got a couple of those tonight. Let's get a scoreboard update all brought to you by Central State Bank, Dylan. We've got a couple for you. West Marshall fighting Brooks's are up 25 to 11 at halftime over AGWSR. And Collins Maxwell, 52, Woodward Academy, 27. 15 to 10, JV on John Dole has got all 10 points for the Fort Dodge Dodgers. Uh, how do the Bobcats shut him down here tonight? I think it's almost the thing where you're going to have to bring a second defender. You're going to have to keep walking people through. Capeu's the best one to guard him one-on-one, -on -one, and he has two fouls on out. So I think you guard John Dole by making sure no one else goes off. Bobcats begin the second quarter with the basketball. Brooks feeds back to Giannetto looking for his third three of the night. That one just off the rack. Weatherly, though, gets the rebound inside but loses it to the Dodgers. Here they go up the court, into the front court, losing it. Here Ty Adams but gathers it back in. Weatherly will step in out him on the left wing. And a pass to the near side corner. Now Westerhoff. Dribbles baseline, left-handed shot, it's no good. Weatherly gets the basketball, outlets it to Brooks up the near side in front of the Bobcat script on George Funk Court, and yeah, that's a little bit of a carry. Got a little bit high with the dribble right there, and here we see his first minutes of his varsity career, Kyle Smith, number 23. He can play three quarters here tonight as he played three quarters at the lower level here tonight, but boy, from all accounts, you've told me he's a shooter. Coach yeah. told me he's a shooter. We're hoping for some points here tonight out of the young freshman. Yeah, Kyle Smith, uh, he has an opportunity. Now, the Smith families are all great shooters. His brother Corey's on the team. His brother Jacob has been there. His dad was a former coach. But he's got a little bit of wiggle, some swag, and can shoot the heck out of the basketball. Coach says uh, just looking for a little more size out of him, but he's still just a freshman. So we'll see how he does with his first uh, minutes on the varsity level, a drive down the right side of the paint, and finally somebody else besides J.B. Anjondo scores. This time it's Cade Westerhoff down on the right block. Bobcats into the front court, leading by three, 15 to 12, with just under seven minutes to go. Smith on the near side corner. Gets it back around the perimeter. Bobcats go, almost turn it over. Brooks gathers it back in high, though. Up to Weatherly. Now Giannato steps into a three on the left wing. It's off the back of the iron. No good. John Dole with the rebound as he climbs the ladder. He'll bring it up court himself. Beads over to the left wing. They'll drive in. Free throw line jumper. It's going to be strong off the back of the iron. Dodgers, though, rip down the turnover. They rumble around on the floor. Now Brooks comes away with it. Three-point lead for the Bobcats. Looking to extend that. Weatherly, far side corner. Gives it back to Brooks. Now inside of the right high post. Giannato had it. Now Giannetto to Weatherly. Boy, they are reaching in on Weatherly there. They are trying to get that pass out of there. Kyron Wilson is going to pick up the first foul of the night for himself. As that is the fourth team foul in the Dodgers here in the first half. Yeah, a lot of hand contact on, on the offensive end as, as the Bobcats are trying to get uh, cutting through this zone. Really, the Bobcats have to get it into the lane before they're settling for threes. Weatherly inside. Nobody was there to guard him, and it's an easy bucket off the glass for Braden Weatherly for two, and it's 17-12. Cats by five. Easiest bucket Braden will ever get. Yeah. I would have made that. You would have. 
A drive inside, off the front of the rack, no good for Callahan, who's checked in for the Dodgers. Bobcats get the basketball to Brooks. Brooks will push. He'll go inside to the paint, puts it up, and the finger roll is good. Treshawn Brooks with four points of the night. It's 19 to 12, Cats on top. Bobcats have to run with this offense out there. John Dole is going to check back in. They got a couple minutes with him on the bench, but the Bobcats need to continue to make this an up-and-down ball game. It was 12-10 at the end of the first quarter, and it is now 19-12, Bobcats with that lead. So a good start to the second quarter here, Dylan. Yeah, John Dole sat on the bench, and the Bobcats attacked. Inside into the paint, Giannetto pokes that one away. They were trying to go down to Westerhoff on the right block. John Dole's going to be back into the game. Ty Adams as well back into the game. For the Dodgers with 5-17 in the second quarter. Baseline right side for the Dodgers, and they're all black tops and bottoms. Red numbers outlined in white here tonight. Bobcats in their home whites. The blue numbers outlined in red. Jondo on the inbounds. He's going to travel with it. Trying to do a little shimmy and shake right there as Brooks was guarding him, but not able to uh, keep that one there as it is a uh, turnover. And the Bobcats will get the basketball right in front of their bench as Treshawn Brooks we look at that last play just hanging in midair and was able to finger roll that one in from just a few feet out what a great play by Treshawn Brooks here he is into the front court near side corner Weatherly back to Brooks now back to Weatherly looking inside Rahelio Sarin trying to beat that little zone defense and the pass I think it got tipped but no nope. did not get tipped they were looking for Drake Capayu out here on the left wing, but just a little high on the swing pass from Treshawn Brooks. A turnover on the Bobcats with under five to go second quarter. Yeah, you want Rahelio to go opposite side. He should have made that pass to Drake, but he didn't rotate, didn't spin on that. Ends up in a turnover. Brooks guarding on Jondal. Back out, free throw line. Jumper's going to be good. It's good for Ryan Daniel, who's checked in for the Dodgers. 19-14, Bobcats still on top inside the roundhouse. Al Smith near side, the freshman, gives it to Capayu, now rotates around, Brooks gets it right wing around the perimeter, Bobcats going. Capayu over to Kyle Smith, fakes, drives baseline, kicks out, Brooks right wing, shot clock down to 10. Now to Capayu, now to Kyle Smith, can he make his first three? Oh, Uh, it's off the back of the iron, Rahelio Soren getting the rebound, back to Smith. Now to Capayu. Now around the perimeter. Brooks drives in, and it's going to be a blocking foul. Count that bucket. Yeah! Right there, Treshawn Brooks puts him up by seven. And one more to come, the old-fashioned three-point play. Love that aggressive Treshawn Brooks. That's a fantastic job. Kyle misses the first one, but he's able he's able to get the ball to the other side of the court, getting the defense off rhythm, and then Trey utilizes it to cut down the defense, to take it to the rack, get the bump and the bucket for a chance for a three-point play. Treshawn Brooks, 70% free throw shooter on the season coming into this one, and he will drop in the free throw for the three-point play, 22-14. Great job by the Bobcats starting to ratchet this up. Inside to Jondal. And turnaround jumper is no good. Treshawn Brooks will haul in the rebound. And here come the Bobcats into the front court. Kyle Smith on the far side. Now back to Brooks. That's defense, that zone defense coming out way out high. Out of Rahelio Seren and a yeah. see it, travel on Rahelio Seren. Here's that play by Treshawn Brooks to draw the foul. Just a great play. I knew it looked like the Dodger knew, hey, I stepped in way too late on that and uh, not able to get it there. Yeah, Trey's got such a quick first step. What you'd love to see from Rogelio is to see him pivot and look look other side, but he tried to dribble on that one and ended up traveling. John to inside takes the jumper from about seven foot out. It's a good play, and JV on John to with 12. He's a good basketball player, but he is built like a D1 football player. He is yeah, he really muscular is. and can jump out of a gym. Brooks turns it over. Westerhoff goes inside, but Brooks got a piece of it. Not here, and it's going to be to the to the Bobcats back again. He spiked it off the yeah. glass. It spiked back off Fort Dodge. 
off of Westerhoff, and it's Bobcat basketball. And a timeout on the floor with three minutes in the second quarter. Cats are up 22-16 on KFJB and KFJB TV. Nestor closing in on that retirement property. Chances are your plans didn't include mom moving in, but life happens and you do the right thing. Wells Fargo Advisors can help. For more than 125 years, we've created wealth management and investment strategies aimed at achieving our clients' personal financial goals. When retirement means caring for yourself and a loved one, turn to Wells Fargo Advisors. Together, we'll go far. Wells Fargo Advisors is located at 14 East South Ridge Road in Marshalltown. Call them at 641-752-5401. They're a member SIPC. Hey, Bobcat fans, this is Kale Sandvik, and you're watching Marshalltown Basketball on KFJB-TV. 22-16 the lead as the Bobcats with three minutes in the second quarter here on KFJB and KFJB-TV. As we look at that block by Trayshawn Brooks, yeah, blocks the shot, went right back into the Fort Dodge player's face, and Bobcats with that 22-16 lead. Uh, Right now, though, you can see the Bobcats have an eight-point lead, playing pretty well, but... The one thing that they are missing is an inside presence, and it's showing. Yeah, it really is. You see the value of Dalen Houston right now. That 6'4", super athletic, can play the post, can take it to the rack, but also gives you that big defensive present, being able to be that shot blocker on the other side. You see it on the defensive side, Javion's able to, he's so strong, able to get wherever he wants to go, and offensively the Bobcats are just playing perimeter basketball and not, don't have that opportunity to get it down low on the block. Treshawn Brooks gets the inbounds pass out of the timeout as he brings it into the front court. On the right wing, has it. Crosses over, passes to Kyle Smith on the near side. And now back to Giannetto. As around, he'll drive it. Hangs up in midair. Off the glass. It's good for Treshawn Brooks. You love that aggressiveness. Man, it's really come alive. He's got nine. But in the past week and a half with injuries and things of that nature, I think he knows he needs to step up, and he's been answering the bell. And if you go side to side in a 2-3 zone, you're going to have driving lanes. Jumper for Jondal is short. Brooks will get the rebound. Cats leading 24-16 with 2.17 and counting in the second quarter. Smith left wing. Bounce pass back to Brooks at the top of the key into Rahelio Seren. And a reach-in foul is going to be called as Ryan Daniel from behind. Boy, they've really been all, all over that man in the middle who's mm-hmm. operating at the free-throw line, whether it's Rahelio Seren. We've also seen earlier tonight Corey Smith in that spot. So they are reading it. They're knowing what's going to come, but couple of fouls we've seen on that play. Yeah, they're pressuring the ball, they're pressuring the perimeter, and they're pressuring the free throw line extended. Rahelio Sorin misses the inside shot, but Brooks able to pick it away from Fort Dodge, and the layup is good, and the Cats now up by 10. Rahelio was wide open on the uh, inbounds, but just came up a little bit short on the shot, but it was a good play by him, and I just love that Rahelio improved all football season, and now he's doing it on the basketball yep. court as well. You can see things are really starting to come. He slides over defensively, leaves the man open on the right block, though, right here, and it's Ty Adams for his first bucket of the night. Yeah, after John Dill got all 10 in the first quarter, there have been four Dodgers to score here in the second quarter. Brooks, crossover. Feed to Rejalio Seren, puts it on the deck around the perimeter. One extra pass, and the third three of the night trying to make it. Giannetto comes up short, no good. That was beautiful, all except for the result. That was great ball movement. It really was. I think with a team knowing they're a little bit, I wouldn't say undersized, but obviously missing a post presence, a travel's going to be called on Giannetto as he went for the loose ball, and he had it in his hands and it's going to be a travel so back to the Dodgers with 106 but I think the Cats know without Houston in that inside inside interior post presence they know they've got to be good passers and and open up some lanes yeah you go to the post not so much to score but go to suck in the defense to open up perimeter shots or open up driving lanes Right wing, defense steps in, although he's get it, able to get it to go. Demarion Callahan, his first bucket of the night. He drives in. Weatherly was trying to shut down the lane but could not do so. Smith, cross-court pass to Giannetto, left wing, over to Kyle Smith. A couple of Smiths on the court. Giannetto puts it down on the block, left high post jumper. It's pure. Great play by Giannetto right there, left high post. He's at, he has eight in the game. Back the other way in transition, almost out of bounds as Callahan on the baseline. 
Tips it back out to the top of the key as Fort Dodge will pull it out and look to reset with 22 seconds remaining on the sh- on the game clock. Shot clock is turned off. Yeah, it looks like they're going to hold for one shot. I anticipate John will getting it with about 8 to se- 10 seconds to go. John will get it now with five seconds to go before halftime. Brooks is guarding on him. This is They're going to set a screen. No, set. that is not a good look. Buzzer comes. They should not give that shot. They're going to give that? Boy, I'd like to see that on replay. John will get the three-pointer at the buzzer. 28-23 to 23 is our score. We head to our halftime report. This is Bobcat Basketball on KFJB and KFJB TV. Doesn't end when the weather gets cold at Wandering Creek Golf Club in Marshalltown with their two full swing simulators. Anything you can do at an outdoor golf course, you can do at their indoor golf simulators with 80 plus golf courses to choose from. Wandering Creek has numerous indoor golf tournaments this winter, so check their website for dates and details at wanderingcreekgolf.com. You could also save with special discounts for online bookings. Make a full day of it with golf, food, and your favorite beverage at Wandering Creek Golf Club. Your home is the one place where everything should be perfect, including your air. Capon and Brown helps you achieve the perfect air you deserve with reliable, groundbreaking, award-winning Lennox products. Call Capon and Brown to hear more about how they can help you feel healthier and happier in your home. It doesn't get any more perfect than that. Call them today at 641-753-3563 or visit them online at CaponandBrownInc.com, your local premier Lennox dealer, where quality has been a promise for 40 48 years. Don't let concerns about current events derail your long-term financial strategy. Edward Jones Financial Advisor Zach Wall can help. He'll work with you to understand today's financial landscape and how to be positioned for the long term. Edward Jones can give you the tools for a reasoned, disciplined approach to investing. Call Zach Wall at 641-752-3017 in Marshalltown or online at edwardjones.com. Edward Jones, member SIPC. At Sports Plus Sports Medicine and Physical Therapy Center, we customize each patient's treatment plan to their individual needs. What does that mean? It means that not every back or knee problem is treated the same and that your program will be unique and designed especially for your needs or problem. This improves how quickly you will return to work or sports. The Sports Plus staff is encouraging and takes pride in your successful recovery. This is just one more reason why champions choose Sports Plus Physical Therapy as their favorite place to rehabilitate and train. Welcome to the Halftime Report on KFJB-TV. Carter Giannetto and Treshawn Brooks with a great first half. Giannetto with eight, Treshawn with nine. Boy, those guards are playing well in that first half. Yeah, Trey was very aggressive, especially in that second quarter where he got nine of his 11 points, and Carter was the beneficiary of some good passes from Trey to knock down three and route to eight points. Rahelio Seren having a career night tonight. He's got four at the break. He's had some really good rebounds. We'll see if it continues next. We'll get Dylan's uh, key halftime adjustments coming up in a little bit. All brought to you by Ken's Transmission. But when we come back, we'll talk to head coach Brian Murphy for the girls' basketball team right here on our halftime from the Roundhouse on KFJB and KFJB-TV. Since 1967, Jensen Ford Lincoln has served generations of families around Central Iowa. Quality vehicles, professional service, knowledge of our product, that's a part of Jensen. But what's more important to us is a trust that is passed down from every generation. Jensen Ford Lincoln wants to serve your family. We want to be there for your first car, we want to be there for your family SUV, and we want to see you drive away in the Mustang you always dreamed of. At Jensen, we want to be here for you now and every mile along the way. How can you help Marshalltown High School and enjoy a mouth-watering burger at the same time? By ordering the Bobcat Burger at Legends American Grill. Two quarter-pound patties with crisp bacon strips, sautéed onions and melted American cheddar, jack and Swiss cheeses on top of fresh shredded lettuce on a toasted bun. It's absolutely delicious. One dollar from every Bobcat Burger sold is donated by Legends to Marshalltown High School activities. So, enjoy a Bobcat Burger and help MHS. The Bobcat Burger, another exclusive from Legends American Grill in Marshalltown. And welcome back to the Halftime Report. I'm here with Marshalltown Bobcat girls basketball coach, Coach Brian Murphy. Tonight was a tough one. 
53 to 14. Fort Dodge uh, is victorious as they move to eight and four. It really looked the first about five to six minutes of each quarter. The Bobcats were playing pretty well, and then the last couple minutes of each quarter, it kind of fell apart due to press or whatever. What did you notice here tonight? Uh, you know, I thought we executed parts of our game plan really well. I mean, we, we really want to take away the paint, try to limit second chance points. Uh, you know, I thought we did a pretty good job of doing both of those things pretty consistent throughout the game. But as you said, I mean, anytime you're gifting teams with transition points and those opportunities to get, you know, just to see the shot go down sometimes, it builds their confidence. And that was the difference. They just they were able to get more shots to go down and start to build their confidence offense. And we just never got to that point. Yeah, and looking in that first half, we knew that Fort Dodge can rebound the basketball on the offensive end, and they did that quite quite a bit. For the Bobcats, uh, Hively and both of the male uh, young ladies really were beasts on the boards. Yep, absolutely. I mean, we came in knowing who we had to stop. You know, ultimately, I thought for the most part we did a pretty good job of limiting Hively uh, off the boards, you know, other than a couple of those ones where you're scrambling a little bit off position. But, you know, overall I thought, you know, the defensive end, it was, it was the end of the floor I was relatively pleased with where take some of those transition buckets out of there and get, take some of their confidence on those jump shots, and it's a different game. But we just can't, we can't keep gifting teams with easy buckets. Right, and tomorrow night, got another match up there. What do you tell the girls in that Monday to Tuesday night, again, back-to-back games, what's your message to them here tonight? You know, I think that the danger of facing an opponent you've already faced before is that, you know, you can't walk in making any right. assumptions. Uh, you know, this is our, uh, this will be the fifth game in the last eight days for us. So, yeah. I mean, we've got to make sure that we walk into that game, you know, fully ready to go mentally and physically because, you know, it, any team you give an opportunity to build a little confidence and things can get ugly pretty quick. So we've got to make sure we're mentally ready uh, when we walk in that gym tomorrow. Thank you very much, Coach, and good luck tonight and, or tomorrow night. And we'll be back with the Kent Transmission key adjustment for the second half. When Mike Overton moved to Laurel, Iowa, he had a vision to have a diesel repair shop that would support his growing family and passion for working on diesel engines. Being part of the East Marshall community means ensuring that farmers, truck drivers, and businesses run smoothly. With a large building and state-of-the-art equipment, Laurel Diesel Services is always up for a challenge. When your farm trucks, semis, or other diesel equipment requires maintenance or the occasional repair, take it to Laurel Diesel Services. The right insurance agent can make all the difference. Assured Partners agents represent multiple insurance companies. They can pick and choose from a larger variety of outstanding insurance options. Assured Partners also handles life and health insurance and Medicare supplement coverage. With access to local, regional, and national insurance companies, Assured Partners will create policies tailored to the coverage you need. For more information, go online to assuredpartners.com slash Marshalltown. Power through partnership with Assured Partners in Marshalltown, Toledo, and West Des Moines. Welcome back into our halftime report. Time to get a scoreboard update all brought to you by Central State Bank. Dylan? Yes, West Marshall's taking it to AGWSR after three, 38 to 16. And Collins Maxwell defeats Woodward Academy 66 to 40. Double scoreboard gets them every time on KFJB TV. Ever seen what it takes to fix a transmission? It takes a lot of patience, a lot of experience, and a whole lot of talent. At Ken's Transmission, they have all the above. Family owned and operated with over 62 years of experience in all areas of transmission. Keeping your vehicle shifting smoothly and routine maintenance, repair and replacement, including automatic and manual. For reputable service you can trust, Ken's Transmission. Ken's Transmission at 306 East Anson Street in Marshalltown is a proud sponsor of the Marshalltown Bobcats. Hey Bobcat fans, this is Drake Capello and you're watching Bobcat Basketball on KFJB TV. Welcome back inside the Roundhouse here on KFJB and KFJB TV. It's time for our halftime adjustments all presented by Ken's Transmission of Marshalltown. Dylan? Yeah, it's really pretty simple is attack, attack on that 2-3 zone. Get it side to side. Rogelio Seren has to pivot and look weak side to be able to open those driving lanes. That is our halftime adjustments all presented by Ken's Transmission, your family-owned transmission experts. 28-23 28-23 at the break from inside the roundhouse on George Funk Court. Second half is next right here on your home for the Gats. It's News Talk 1230, KFJB AM 93.9 FM, and right here on KFJB TV. 
Never have to wait after ordering new appliances. At Penn's Appliance, you wouldn't. With an incredible selection in stock and ready to install today. Our friendly team is here to help you pick the perfect set to match your style. And let our professional technicians install and set up your new appliances. Often delivering the very next day. Stop in today, see all the new features, and find your new look at Pence Appliance. For sales and service of everything appliance, go see the Pence team. Hey, Bobcat Nation, it's Corey Smith, and you're watching Bobcat Basketball on KFJB TV. Inside the Bobcat huddle here on KFJB TV, I'm Brandon Lewis, Dylan Dills alongside me. As you look inside that bench, of course, uh, man in the boot right there, Dale in Houston. Bobcats missing that inside interior presence. Of course, we know Prince Jala also not with the Bobcats uh, as well, not with the team. So, uh, you know, missing a couple of guys that are those interior players. Bobcats still kind of learning how to play without that. And I think doing a really good job, but uh, we'll see how the second half goes as Fort Dodge will begin with the basketball. Yeah, you take your two uh, highest scores, take one off the team for the whole year, and then Dalen off for as long as he's out. Uh, it's a totally different type of basketball for sure. Capello up top on Jondal as uh, Jondal passed it to the right wing. Now Giannetto drives inside against Carter Woodruff and Giannetto going to be called for a hold as that will be Giannetto's first foul of the night. Yeah, 28-23 with 7.46 in the third quarter. Yeah, they were isolating Giannetto on the far side trying to drive and get a bucket on him. Estrahoff misplays the basketball but gathers it back in. Right high post jumper. It is good for Kyron Wilson. His first points of the game. It's a three-point ball game. Bobcats have found themselves in a fight. Down low inside. Eisenbart takes the jumper but could not get it to go. Capayu and Eisenbart both playing with two fouls. Saw limited minutes in that first half. Three from NBA range. It is no good. Brooks with the rebound off the miss by Woodruff off the left wing. Brooks brings it up the far side right in front of the student section. He'll settle in, left wing, drives baseline, a little hesitation move, tosses it off the glass, it's no good. On a fast break, here comes John up the near side. Steps in between Capeyu and, yeah, Capeyu and Weatherly, and John gets the bucket as he's got 17 in the game. He had 15 at the break. He's already over his average of about 16.7 points per game, and he is so strong but athletic enough with balance to be able to score. Capayu three, right wings. He steps into it off the pass by Brooks. It's no good off the back of the iron outlet to Jondal up the far sideline over the midcourt line and into the front court. Yeah, this is a definitely found themselves in a dogfight. We said it's a rivalry. And Fort Dodge is not like Marshalltown, and they have a kid that is quite skilled in Javion Jondal. Westerhoff pushes off of Brooks, takes the jumper. It's good. Oh, God, he kind of pushed off from Brooks there as he yeah. faded away on the shot. And that gives Fort Dodge the lead, 29-28. Yeah, Trey's got to be a little bit stronger uh, on that, not allow the contact to displace him so much. 6-0 run for the Dodgers out of the midway break. Up to Brooks, the right high post. Swing pass over to Eisenbart. Now to the top of the key to Capayu. Dribbles down the left side of the paint. Kicks out Weatherly, or excuse me, Eisenbart. Three! He gets his first three of the night to go right there. A much needed bucket to stop the bleeding. 31 29. A timeout on the floor there from the officials as the net got caught up there after the splash from Eisenbart. Eisenbart doesn't have the quickest feet on the team, but that release is lightning fast. He can get a shot up quickly. Woodruff on left wing. Almost throws a pick right there. Or Dodge will keep it. They lose the basketball. Toss went up awkwardly. Westerhoff had it bounce up into his chest. Here comes Capello up to Brooks. Left wing. Knife set. It kicks out right wing to Giannetto. Now back top of the key. Straight on. Capello is pure right there for Capello. His second three of the night. And the Bobcats answer a 6-0 run of their own with two made threes. Yeah, huge job. Capay wide open and nothing but nylon for the Cats.
Turnaround jumper on the right baseline from about eight foot out. It's no good for the Dodgers on the far side by Woodruff. Here comes Brooks, swing out to Giannetto, NBA three. That one a long one off the back of the iron, no good. And the Dodgers throw it out of bounds. They were trying to look up court to Jondal, and it's out of bounds. Back to the Cats with four and a half minutes to go in the second quarter. We look at that last made three for the Bobcats from Capayu. Big one from straight on. Yeah, just wide open. Great rotation by the Bobcats and knocked it down. Brooks into the front court. Cats leading by five, 34-29 with 4.20 and counting. Giannetto near side corner. Dribbles out to the right wing. We have a change. Still 2-3, but it, it seems more of a man-to-man -man here for Fort Dodge. It's a very aggressive zone that's going at, out at the perimeter. Eisenbar steps in after faking a three, comes up short on the shot. Weatherly, though, beats out for the rebound. He'll get it back to Eisenbarth, open for a three. Can he get a second? Yes, he does. Good feed from Weatherly and a rebound in two made threes. Jackson Eisenbarth, timeout Dodgers. It's 37-29, Bobcats, 352, third quarter on KFJB-TV. Furniture and Mattress has your mattress. Every firmness, comfort, and support level, each at a great price. Make the investment today for a good night's sleep for years to come. McGregor's also has quality furniture for every room in your home. Beautiful, comfortable sofas, recliners, dinette sets, and office furniture to help you work and relax in comfort and style. McGregor's Furniture is proud to bring you quality furniture and great service, and they are proud to support Bobcat Athletics. McGregor's Furniture and Mattress, downtown Marshalltown, open seven days a week. Hey Bobcat Nation, this is Dale in Houston. You're watching Bobcat Basketball on KFJB TV. Bobcats were down on a 6 0 yep. run to Fort Dodge, but then answer right back with a 9 0 run of themselves with three threes. Yeah, you get a you get an Eisenbar three sandwich with Kipeyu in the middle. Uh, Jackson just knocked it down. Nothing but nylon. I'd like to see the Bobcats extend pressure. When we've seen Fort Dodge with their handle with any pressure, they've been very shaky with the basketball. I would love to see us extend it. I know it's a short bench, so you don't want to do it consistently, but just bring a little bit more pressure. Try to get this game a little bit faster. Yeah, that is for sure as you saw Eisenbart there on KFJB TV. It's been a very entertaining start to the second half as the Bobcats Look to be in some trouble, but fight right back with a couple of big shots. That's the thing, though. We've talked about it a little bit. Live and die by the three. You don't want to, but they've been taking really good open looks with those three-pointers. Yeah, the nature of this line of Bobcats are going to have to make threes, but it's how they get those threes. Yeah, Brooks forces a turnover, and that one looked like it went out of bounds on Fort Dodge and number four in Carter Woodruff as Brooks picked it off and then went for it and then Fort Dodge, I thought they touched it again, but maybe a bad angle right there. And it will be back to the Dodgers with three and a half minutes to go second, third quarter. Activities director Ryan Iskrig over there to make sure no more students are removed for, for the games. Doing some fatherly duties over yeah, there. Yes, he is. <laughs> three is going to come up short in air ball as the shot clock was expiring. Turnover, Dodgers back to the Bobcats. Well, early in this season, the Bobcats, when they couldn't get anything to go offensively, won games by perimeter defense. Saw that on that position right there as Ty Adams was forced to take a really difficult three. Brooks into the front court. He's picked up by Westerhoff. Angles right, left, now back right, now feeds behind Weatherly. Extra pass to Eisenbarth. Back to the top of the key to Brooks. Gets a screen from Eisenbarth. Out of Capayu. Brooks. Brooks draws the defenders in. Eisenbarth thought about the three. Dribbles into nothing. And, yeah, he kind of shuffled his feet just a little bit there. Eisenbarth should have just gone quick just trigger right there. Yeah. Just shoot it. Yeah, just shoot it. Shoot it, Jackson. <laughs> And he, he's a really smart kid, wants to make the right play. Yeah. But man alive, if you're open and you're feeling it, shoot that doggone thing. I don't really like the saying, but selfishly, unselfishly selfish is yep. what Dylan's always trying to say. But Selflessly selfish. <laughs> Jondal steps in between two defenders, scoop and score. Can't get the bucket to go, but the Dodgers get an offensive rebound. Feed it back. 
Right wing three. It's going to be a little bit strong off the back of the glass. Weatherly skies the rack after the Woodruff missed three. Outlet to Giannetto up the far side. Up to Brooks now. Far side quarter. Drives baseline and a reaching foul is going to be called on Westerhoff. Maybe a blocking foul actually right there. And Brooks will pick up the foul on the Dodgers right there. That'll be their first foul of the second half. Second foul of the night on Cade Westerhoff who is guarding. And the Bobcats will have it underneath the hoop. Yeah, Bobcats usually get something good off of this off of this inbound to action. Inbound to Capayu, drives in, pulls up, pure right there, a little 15 foot jumper from the right side for Capayu. It didn't, it, it seemed that they lost him initially in that corner and Drake just a little hesitation, couple bounces, pulls up, pure from 15. 11-0 run now for the Bobcats to answer a 6-0 run by the Dodgers. And the Dodgers jumper at the free throw line will go out of bounds over the backboard and out of play. Carter Woodruff not able to make that shot right there. So turnover with 146 and counting now in the third quarter. Bobcats are looking to extend their lead of 10 right now. I'm really intrigued. This is just the defense they play, but they have pressured the ball from 25, 30 feet out a lot with Trey. And Trey has not been bothered by it all night. Bobcats working around the perimeter now. They post up Capayu left block, and there is a reaching foul going to be called. A little bump inside. Demarion Callahan is checked in, so the junior will commit his first foul of the night as Callahan fouls before the shot came for Capayu. And that's the second team foul on the Dodgers here in the second half. Brooks will inbound, baseline left side. Gets it to Eisenbarth. Dishes underhand to Giannetto. Now back to Brooks. Baseline drive off the back of the iron. It's no good. Rebound out to Fort Dodge. And here they come in transition. No numbers. They'll slow it down. Now a trap. Brooks almost picks the pocket. He does. Giannetto comes up with it. And how could you? Uh, it's, it's a loose ball. You cannot the ball award was on a, the ground. You cannot award a timeout to Holy a loose cow. ball. No one has possession. That's basic 101. 110 to go, oh third quarter, 39 29. Cats on top inside the roundhouse on KFJB TV. And save for your child to go to college. The medical school after graduation was a surprise, a happy, expensive surprise. Wells Fargo Advisors can help. For more than 125 years, we've created wealth management and investment strategies aimed at achieving our clients' personal financial goals. When opportunities surprise you, turn to Wells Fargo Advisors. Together, we'll go far. Wells Fargo Advisors is located at 14 East South Ridge Road in Marshalltown. Call them at 641-752-5401. They're a member SIPC. Hey, Bobcat fans, this is Jackson Bowie, and you're watching Bobcat Basketball on KFJB-TV. 39-29, Bobcats with a 10-point lead, a timeout awarded to Fort Dodge, even though there was no possession by either team. Ball was rolling around on the floor. Yeah, the hard Fort Dodge almost with a five-second call to just throw it into the backcourt. Giannetto's going to track it down, and the Dodgers will come away with it with Warland. Warland guarded by Giannetto. Dish is right side, drive in, Treshawn Brooks forces a turnover. Now reaching foul on the Dodgers as Giannetto had the basketball, and it's going to be on Warland. And actually, no, it's going to be on Ryan Daniel. Number 22 is who they rule it on as Daniel pick up his third foul of the night. Back to the Bobcats, though, with the final yeah. minute here in the third quarter coming. Yeah, Bobcats, when they've been able to pressure that, that Fort Dodge backcourt, have turned the ball over quite a bit. Fort Dodge not getting a whole lot off the bounce here tonight. Cross-court pass, Giannetto from Eisenbarth as they quickly went back and forth. Eisenbarth's been left wide open. So is Capayu, and his three is going to come up strong off the left side of the iron. Fort Dodge gets the basketball to bring it up far sideline with Westerhoff. Westerhoff to the free throw line. Right high post is Pierre right there as he feeds back on the shot. It's good. His second made field goal in the second half. He has six points in the game. And it is an eight-point game. That stops a 9-0 run for the, uh, or excuse me, 11-0 run for the Bobcats, answering back a 6-0 run by the Dodgers to begin the second half. Weatherly, top of the key around the perimeter. Eisenbarth pulls on it, and no, not able to get the three from the far side quarter. Weatherly, though, tips it off the Dodgers, and it will stay with the Cats with the final three seconds of the third quarter. Braden has 
two points, but he has been very active getting the Bobcats extra possessions. Really good night for the senior. Yeah, he really has had a nice night tonight. And it's an eight-point game. Timeout's going to be taken by the Bobcats. We'll keep it right here with just three seconds to go in the third quarter. But, boy, how about that, though? You get down 6-0 run by the Dodgers, then you bounce back at 11-0 run of your own. And, uh, really, I, I just think that was – Huge for the Bobcats in that situation. Yeah, it really was. The Bobcats able to get some turnovers, get some things going, able to really do a nice job in the half court of moving that 2-3 zone by getting passes on both sides, swinging the ball for a couple wide open shots for Eisenbarth. Capayu knocks down a three and another bucket. Bobcats doing a nice job on the offensive end in this third quarter. Well, we'll see if they can uh, extend their lead back here with the final three seconds to go before the end of the third quarter. Brooks to inbound. Looking around, looking around. Eisenbarth open near side quarter. Takes one dribble, puts it up. Right wing three is off the back of the yard. It is no good. And the Cats take an eight-point lead to the fourth quarter right here on your home for Bobcat Athletics. It's News Talk 1230, KFJB AM 93.9 FM, and right here on KFJB TV. In your home is power. Power to remodel your home. Take a memorable vacation at a deck or patio. Lennox Employees Credit Union can help you unleash the financial power you possess with a home equity loan. Consolidate debt, fund a student loan, or pay for a wedding. Home equity loans are as low as 5.74% for a five-year fixed rate loan. The loan process is easy. See Lennox Employees Credit Union, 1004 East Main Street in Marshalltown. Member NCUA, Equal Housing Lender. Online at LennoxECU.com. Bobcat Nation, this is Jackson Eisenbarth. You're watching Bobcat Basketball on KFJB TV. 39-31 as we head to the fourth quarter in the Marshalltown Roundhouse on George Funk Court. Bobcats leading by eight. 39-31 time for a scoreboard update, which is all brought to you tonight by Central State Bank. Discover what Central State Bank can do for you. Locations in Ames, State Center, and in West Des Moines. Dylan? West Marshall Trojans 46, AGWSR 33, Collins Maxwell 66, Woodward Academy 40. 39 31 inside the roundhouse. Bobcats will begin the fourth quarter with the basketball on the right side of your radio dial and your TV screen. Eight point lead. Bobcats have led in every quarter 12 10 at the end of the first, 28 to 23. They led at halftime and 39 31 as we start up the fourth quarter. Weatherly with the basketball almost kind of stepped with it without taking a dribble, almost a turnover. Capayu near side corner, gets the feed from Giannetto, drives baseline, feeds back to Weatherly. Weatherly now feeds inside, great pass, extra pass to Eisenbarth, open for the three. Far side corner, it's good. He's got three threes on the night. A great pass by Drake from underneath the hoop. Then lost Adams in transition. Yeah, Adams three is no good. Brooks Hulls in the rebound. Cats... Up by 11, this their largest lead of the night. And uh, Fort Dodge is extending a 1-2-2 trap. Giannetto gets it out of the trap into the front court. Bobcats feed it around the perimeter. Brooks back to the left wing. Slices in, kicks out. Capayu wide open three. Yeah. Splash! What gets you out of that is, is make threes. Just make three after three. Great job by Trey. Get, finding the weak, the weak side of that zone and driving it in, kicking it out to Drake, and now here comes the press. And he's got three threes on the night. And yeah, they've all been big ones here for Drake Capay. As you see just the Bobcats here on KFJB TV just working around the basketball, and that was the last Eisenbar three that, that he made here tonight. He's feeling it as well. Bobcats with some pressure on the Dodgers there, almost get the turnover, but cannot. Eisenbarth will pick up. Westerhoff, Westerhoff feeds it back behind him for the three on the left wing by Woodruff. It's no good. Now Giannetto gets the rebound as it bounces out of there, and he'll bring it up the far sideline from the student section. He'll slow it down left wing. Cross-court pass right wing. Now down low to Weatherly. Extra pass, Eisenbarth. Can he hit it? Yeah! He is on fire as Eisenbarth hits his fourth three in the second half. And you see that inside-out pass. Get it on the block. Reverse it over. Wide open corner three again. Four threes tonight. And I think we're going to see an illegal screen on the Dodgers inside as it will come in on Cade Westerhoff. He was trying to open up somebody out there on the left wing. I think that was Ty Adams. But uh, anyway, 48-31. Bobcats up with 6.15 to go in the game. It was 29-28 Fort Dodge in the third quarter. Bobcats on a 20-2 run. And in that moment, they have hit 
six threes in the second half. Brooks goes in, baseline, right side, count that bucket, yeah! A step in, I think that was Jondal down on the right block. They step in way too late. The foul is going to come. The shot will go, and it is going to be Ty Adams picking up the foul, his first one of the night as he stepped in late. Huge play. Brooks just taking over. That's his first bucket of the second half as Treshawn Brooks with 11 and now 12 as he is now 2 of 2 at the free throw line here tonight. But Boy, exceptional play out of the guards here tonight. Great ball movement, opening guys up and knocking down shots when you need them. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Capayu with great defense, but going to get called for the bump. Real. His third foul of the night for Capayu. Yeah, real, real close on that one. But the Bobcats, as they increase the pressure, uh, Fort Dodge backcourt not able to handle the pressure so far. Cats have built a 20-point lead here in the fourth quarter with under six minutes to go. And Jackson Eisenbarth having a little bit of a coming-out party this season. We haven't seen Jackson with a, a breakout 20-point game like we did last year a couple times. No, but I'm happy to be here for it. Yeah, that is for sure. A miss at the free throw line, but the rebound inside. It comes from Adams, and the putback is no good, but he's fouled by Braden Weatherly as Weatherly will pick up his first foul of the night. Here's that last play by Treshawn Brooks, still in his. He hangs in the air and count the bucket. It's good as Adam stepped in on him. Yeah, he's got great balance, great strength, and what makes a good point guard? You do whatever your team needs. He passed first in that third quarter, scored a bunch in the second quarter, and has been able to score there to start off the fourth quarter. Well, you see Ty Adams at the line here, a 58% free throw shooter. Last year he had eight points in two matchups against the Bobcats. Adams misses the free throw, but Javion Jondal with the rebound put back with 5.29 to go in the game. It's 51 34. Bobcats with the lead as Adams splits him at the line. This is Bobcat Basketball. You're watching and listening to KFJB and KFJB TV. Marshalltown knows competition. We started forging trowels in 1890 and evolved into manufacturing tools for masonry, drywall, concrete, flooring, tile, paint, and more. Today, we're still going strong. Marshalltown strong. As a worldwide leader in manufacturing, we crush the competition. We believe in our community and are proud to support Bobcat Athletics. Hey, Bobcat fans. This is Drake Capello, and you're watching Bobcat Basketball on KFJB TV. 51-34, JV Unjondal just made his second bucket of the second half after having 15 in the first half. Bobcats have done a really good job to really contain him here tonight in the second half. Yeah, a couple of things as they've pressured the ball more both full court and in the half court, it kind of gets Jondal out of where he's most effective in that half court offense. Bobcats into the front court, Giannetto dribbles down to the right block, he gets trapped right there, Capayu with a pass from Giannetto and I think a timeout going to be called we'll keep it right here with 517 to go 51 34 so the Bobcats you know uh, without Dalen Houston tonight we've already talked about that a little bit but with the style of play that they have found late in this game boy this is I mean as long as you're knocking down the shots yeah extra passes finding those guys open it's a extremely successful style of play for this team yeah what's going to happen in each corner you're going to have Jackson Eisenbarth in one corner, Drake Capayu in the other corner, and it's up to the guard play, be it uh, Carter Gianetta or Trey Brooks, to get it into the lane and then kick it out. Or what we've seen also, Braden Weatherly on that post position, getting it inside and kicking it right back out to those corners for wide open shots. Bob Katz will inbound, Brooks baseline right side, looks in for Eisenbarth, put it up the shot, good job by Eisenbarth. I think they're going to call the foul on the bump before the shot came, so it'll be on the floor. That is going to be the sixth team foul on the Dodgers, so one more of the Bobcats will be in the bonus. That's number four on the night on Cade Westerhoff. Bobcats in the same play on the inbounds. Eisenbarth got it and draws a foul, and the shot is no good by Eisenbarth with two free throws. This time it's going to come in on Drake Warland, his first foul of the night. Yeah, the Bobcats always get a good opportunity from the underneath inbounds play. 
Eisenbarth not able to hit on the free throw. The first one, second one to come. Eisenbarth, the 67% free throw shooter on the season. Yeah, bad analyst joke. He needs to stand at the three-point line. <laughs> <laughs> was a bad token laugh for you, though. I appreciate it. John Dole in the backcourt gets the inbounds for the Dodgers. 52-34 after the one-made free throw for Eisenbarth. Brooks far side guarding on Westerhoff. Westerhoff picks up the dribble, looking around, looking around. Brooks kind of try to slap at that one. They finally find J.B. Anjano for the scoop and score. Shot's no good. Capay's going to pick up his fourth, though, as he fouls from behind. Yeah, Drake got caught on Javion's hip, and that's it was all she wrote once Jondo got it with a running head start. Capay will check. Yeah, I, don't th- I think Coach is going to leave him in here with four and 451 in the lead of 52 36. So the shot did not, or it did count, excuse me, as Jondo. Did make that one inside as he makes a free throw now. 22 points in the game for John Dole. Bobcats break the press. Weatherly slows it down, though. Capayu says, why not keep it going? Three is off the left side of the iron. John Dole with the rebound. Back in transition to three. Eisenbar stretches out. Maybe got something in the eye of the shooter. Ian Westerhoff, it's no good. Brooks with the outlet. Up court to Eisenbar. The nether three. Near side corner off the back of the iron. No good. And quickly for Dodge with the rebound. Here comes Warland up the far side. Gives to Jondal. Jondal sees it Avenue. Goes down the right side of the paint. It's good for two. Yeah, Braden just allowed. He just, he went into retreat mode. You've got to meet Jondal up at the free throw line because otherwise he's too strong and too athletic. Yeah. Bobcats breathe the press. A layup is good by Carter Giannetto. His first bucket of the second half. He has 10 in the game now, 54-39. Bobcats with 350 and counting fourth quarter. Yeah, I love how you attack, to, attack that press to get the easy layup. On the right side, Woodruff. Shot is no good, but the rebound goes back out to the top of the key. Giannetto will grab the basketball. And the Bobcats will get into the front court with three and a half minutes to go in this one. Coming up after the game, we'll talk to head coach Michael Apple, who all brought to you by Oral Diesel Services inside the locker room report, all brought to you by Wells Fargo Advisors. Eisenbarth, nether catch and shoot, three left wing. It's good as the pop is good. It's his fifth three of the night. And Jackson Eisenbarth, have a night, 16. Yeah, we've got our uh, Calvin Rocket Player of the Week after tomorrow's game. 16 for Eisenbarth is making him look like a pretty good option. Orland passes over to Westerhoff. Turnaround baseline jumper is good. He got the defense to get off of him just for a little bit. And Westerhoff with eight in the game now. Bobcats beat the press again. Up court quickly to Eisenbarth with under three minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Brooks at the top of the key. Crossover drive in free throw line. Feed to Weatherly. Comes up short on the shot. Gets his own miss of the rebound. Back to Brooks. Now back to Compeyu. Right wing. Now kick back to Brooks. Brooks drives into the paint again, and he is going to be hit hard. Boy, he'll hit the deck, and that's going to be a foul on the Dodgers. It will send Brooks to the line, and I think you let him shoot these free throws, and you get him out of the game. Yep. that's. I think you could hear <laughs> the vacuum suck when he went up and got hit in the air. There is no reason, especially because he was out you for a You want to yell down games. to Coach uh, to make sure he's coming out of the game, or do you? <laughs> I, I, I'll text, hey, Coach, Kyle <laughs> Smith needs some run. Drayshon for two on the shooting foul, which came in on Adams. That's Adams' second of the night, and Brooks is good on the first free throw. I really love Trey's game. He's, he's just a really good ball player. He's, uh, he does whatever you need. He can take it to the rack. He can score it. He can defend. He can shoot a little bit. That's probably the weakest part of his game, but he doesn't force anything. Bobcats led by 20 at one point in this game. They now lead by 18 again. As Brooks knocks down the second free throw, he is 4-4 four of four from the free throw stripe tonight. As Treshawn Brooks with a good night, he has 16. Bobcats force a stur- turnover. It's Treshawn Brooks. He tried to feed it in to Weatherly, who was cutting down on the left block, but it was tipped away by the Dodgers. And coming back into the game, as we see Giannetto's last layup, it was a nice play as the Bobcats broke the press. 
Corey Smith is back into the game for the Bobcats. Giannetto will check out. Treshawn Brooks will inbound. Baseline left side. Smith will dribble it out top of the key. Now around the perimeter. To pay you back to Brooks. Out of Eisenbarth. 6-3 of the night, no good, but Capayu climbs the ladder, gets the rebound for the Bobcats. Capayu, another three for himself, splash again! Capayu with his fourth three of the night. Yeah, Bobcats, their fifth three of the fourth quarter. Just absolutely dealing. Bobcats will make some substitutions here with 1.53 to go before the end of the fourth quarter. Rahelio Serrin is back into the game as well as Kyle Smith is also into the game. Sixty-two forty-one. Bobcats on top with 145 to go. Dodgers on offense. They've had a few substitutions as well on their side of things. On the near side quarter, Royce Peterson has it. And a shot from Demarion Callahan is no good out of bounds with one and a half minutes to go. And here making his season debut is Jackson Bowie into the game. 62-41 after quite the injury during football season. Jackson Bowie onto the basketball court for the first time. Three as Brooks swipes at it. Jackson Bowie with the rebound inside. As he almost had that basketball, that one on the deck. Players got close to that foot, and I saw him kind of bring that foot back up. I think he got a little bit nervous. So full timeout's going to be called here. 62-41, 1.22 to go in this one. Bobcats lead it inside the roundhouse on KFJB and KFJB TV. The insurance agent can make all the difference. Assured Partners agents represent multiple insurance companies. They can pick and choose from a larger variety of outstanding insurance options. Assured Partners also handles life and health insurance and Medicare supplement coverage. With access to local, regional, and national insurance companies, Assured Partners will create policies tailored to the coverage you need. For more information, go online to assuredpartners.com slash Marshalltown. Power through partnership with Assured Partners in Marshalltown. Toledo, and West Des Moines. Hey, Bobcat Nation. This is Rogelio Soran, and you're watching Bobcat Basketball on KFJB TV. Well, what a great moment as you look at the student section. They were definitely cheering loud for the Bobcats as Jackson Bowie making his season debut here. He's back in after the timeout on the floor. 122 to go in the game, 62-41. Is this the largest lead of the night? 21 points for the Marshalltown Bobcats. Brooks with a block inside. And the Bobcats get the basketball up court quickly. Smith back to Brooks. I'm surprised with the substitutions. We have not seen Brooks out. Yeah, it's well, it, it comes down to that's a short bench. Yeah, uh, that's for sure. And they want a ball, a primary ball handler out there still. One minute to go inside the roundhouse on George Funk Court. Bobcats will get their ninth victory of the season here tonight. Bowie feeds to Rahelio Sarin. Now Brooks gets it. Uh, free throw line jumper is no good. Rebound brought in by the Dodgers. Dodgers step out of bounds. That'll be a turnover and back to the Bobcats with 38 seconds to go in the game. And now we will see Treshawn Brooks come out of the game. Get Leal Jor is into the game as well as senior Kale Sandvik for the Bobcats. One thing the last time we saw uh, saw. Uh, Bowie in a Jackson in a game. It was, of course, when he broke his leg. And we talked with his dad, and we thought, what a shame he was going to miss his basketball season. Amazingly enough, here he is. I think it goes. His senior year. Yeah, just how much hard work I think he's put in. It just, everybody talks about that he's in there just working all the time. Sets a screen right here. And a runner. Oh, I thought we were going to see his first career varsity point. Kyle Smith missed it. Sandvik, though, gets the put back, and he misses it this time. Kyle Smith inside, turnaround. Gatliel Jor pulls up for the three. It's no good. And a little excitement late here inside the roundhouse with the Bobcats leading by 21. Uh, Coach Apple had a, had a pick of who he would like in that, in that shot. He was yelling Jackson. <laughs> Bowie, Bowie blocked the shot there momentarily. 
As uh, a little heated there late between Ryan Daniel and Bowie. They get a little shoving, maybe a little game action for the first time in a little while. Get, a little get, get the blood moving. Yeah. Get the blood yeah. moving. 62 41. Bobcats victorious as they improved to 9 and 4 on the season. We head to the locker room report next, right here on your home for the Cats. It's News Talk 1230 KFJB AM 93.9 FM and right here on KFJB TV. Choose Marshtown Community College for your education. A quality education. Hands-on career training. Convenient on-campus living. One-on-one -on -one attention from my instructors. Earning my AA degree and transferring to university all while saving money. Why was MCC the right choice for me? The great student activities and the friends I met. Two convenient locations and the option to take online classes. The right choice is MCC. You should never have to wait after ordering new appliances. At Penn's Appliance, you wouldn't. With an incredible selection in stock and ready to install today, our friendly team is here to help you pick the perfect set to match your style. And let our professional technicians install and set up your new appliances, often delivering the very next day. Stop in today, see all the new features, and find your new look at Pence Appliance. For sales and service of everything appliance, go see the Pence team. McGregor's Furniture and Mattress has your mattress. Every firmness, comfort, and support level, each at a great price. Make the investment today for a good night's sleep for years to come. McGregor's also has quality furniture for every room in your home. Beautiful, comfortable sofas, recliners, dinette sets, and office furniture to help you work and relax in comfort and style. McGregor's Furniture is proud to bring you quality furniture and great service, and they are proud to support Bobcat Athletics. McGregor's Furniture and Mattress, downtown Marshalltown, open seven days a week. Small businesses are the backbone of our community. Marshalltown Area Chamber of Commerce reminds you that when you shop locally, you are benefiting members of our community and adding to our local community overall. You'll find local business owners are generally more knowledgeable, provide better service, and even know their customers by name. Marshalltown Area Chamber of Commerce exists to be an advocate for our business community. Membership in the chamber benefits your business and adds to the strength of our advocacy efforts. For more information on shopping locally and chamber membership, go to Marshalltown Org. Coming up, post-game statistics, a check of the area scoreboard, and post-game reaction. The Locker Room Report on KFJB-TV, presented by Wells Fargo Advisors of Marshalltown. Locker Room Report from inside the Marshalltown Roundhouse here on KFJB and KFJB-TV. I'm Brandon Lewis. Dylan Doe's alongside me. A 21-point win here tonight. Bobcats. We're down on a 6-0 run to the Dodgers out of the halftime break, but storm back. They have an 11-0 run of their own, and then they used a 20-2 run overall to extend that lead here tonight. It was a very impressive second half. It was kind of wondering at halftime what way the game was going to go, and then especially when you saw Fort Dodge out of the break, you are like, uh-oh, it's going to be a long second half, but not the case. Yeah, the Bobcats finally got some rhythm in that offensive end. Uh, they were able to get great ball movement, ending with big threes where Jackson Eisenbarth had all 16 of his points in the second half, and Drake Capayu also hit some threes. And then they started pressuring the basketball and starting to get turnovers and easy buckets, and the Bobcats win by 21, but it was a dogfight there in the third quarter. Yeah, it really was. Uh, final stat line, Treshawn Brooks was 16-14 for Drake Capayu, 16 for Jackson Eisenbarth. Carter Giannetto with 10, four guys in double figures. You really like that if you're Coach Apple. Yeah, you love the balance because when Dalen Houston isn't on the court, you got to mix it up. you got to get it to everyone. And Trey Brooks gave the Bobcats everything tonight. He was able to get it to the rack or he was able to get it into the lane to kick. And when Jackson Eisenbarth and fellow senior Drake Capayu started to knock down threes, the Bobcats started to roll in the second half. All right, so again, a final score, 62-41. Bobcats win it by 21 inside the roundhouse. When we come back, we'll get you a scoreboard update on the locker room report. All brought to you by Wells Fargo Advisors in Marshalltown, right here on KFJB-TV. And save for your child to go to college. The medical school after graduation was a surprise, a happy, expensive surprise. Wells Fargo Advisors can help. For more than 125 years, we've created wealth management and investment strategies aimed at achieving our clients' personal financial goals. When opportunities surprise you, turn to Wells Fargo Advisors. Together, we'll go far. Wells Fargo Advisors is located at 14 East South Ridge Road in Marshalltown. Call them at 641-752-5401. They're a member SIPC. 
Golf doesn't end when the weather gets cold at Wandering Creek Golf Club in Marshalltown with their two full swing simulators. Anything you can do at an outdoor golf course, you can do at their indoor golf simulators with 80 plus golf courses to choose from. Wandering Creek has numerous indoor golf tournaments this winter, so check their website for dates and details at wanderingcreekgolf.com. You can also save with special discounts for online bookings. Make a full day of it with golf, food, and your favorite beverage at Wandering Creek Golf Club. Your home is the one place where everything should be perfect, including your air. Capon and Brown helps you achieve the perfect air you deserve with reliable, groundbreaking, award-winning Lennox products. Call Capon and Brown to hear more about how they can help you feel healthier and happier in your home. It doesn't get any more perfect than that. Call them today at 641-753-3563 or visit them online at CaponandBrownInc.com. Your local premier Lennox dealer where quality has been a promise for 40 years. Are you looking for an affordable way to update the look of your shower or vanity top? At Top Crafters, we offer more than just countertops. The possibilities are endless with custom and standard shower bases and panels. Wilson Art's innovative wall panel system and the Onyx Collection both make custom showers easy. These systems are beautiful, durable, and made in the USA. Top Crafters also has a huge selection of laminate, solid surface, quartz, and granite. For your next project, stop into our showroom at 811 Iowa Avenue West in Marshalltown. Welcome back into the Locker Room Report right here on KFJB and KFJB TV. I'm Brandon Lewis. Time for a scoreboard update all brought to you by Central State Bank. Dylan? Yeah, Applington Parkersburg keeps on rolling. They beat Columbus Catholic 76 to 24. AGWSR fell to West Marshall 46 to 33, and then Collins Maxwell beat Woodward Academy 66 to 40. Why does the graphic always get over my face and not yours? Because I'm the one. This is the money maker. This is the <laughs> KFJV TV money maker. Um, I don't know how much money you're making for us, but it better be a lot. I, it's probably not that much. <laughs> it's probably not that much. But I make people warm and fuzzy inside. You are warm and fuzzy. All right, we are back with the locker room report. We'll talk to head coach Michael Apple right here from inside the roundhouse on KFJB and KFJB TV. In this world, you are what you put on social media. If you don't believe me, go check out Calvin Rocket on Facebook. Not only will you find enticing pictures of delicious specials and favorite menu items, you'll also see a whole lot of Bobcat pride. From football to fine arts and everything in between, Calvin Rocket is always sharing what makes them proud to be Bobcats. Keep up to date with Calvin Rocket specials and events at Facebook.com slash Calvin Rocket Marshalltown. Share the pride and don't forget to share the cheese curds. You're an empty nester closing in on that retirement property. Chances are your plans didn't include mom moving in, but life happens and you do the right thing. Wells Fargo Advisors can help. For more than 125 years, we've created wealth management and investment strategies aimed at achieving our clients' personal financial goals. When retirement means caring for yourself and a loved one, turn to Wells Fargo Advisors. Together, we'll go far. Wells Fargo Advisors is located at 14 East South Ridge Road in Marshalltown. Call them at 641-752-5401. They're a member SIPC. At Sports Plus Sports Medicine and Physical Therapy Center, we customize each patient's treatment plan to their individual needs. What does that mean? It means that not every back or knee problem is treated the same and that your program will be unique and designed especially for your needs or problem. This improves how quickly you will return to work or sports. The Sports Plus staff is encouraging and takes pride in your successful recovery. This is just one more reason why champions choose Sports Plus Physical Therapy as their favorite place to rehabilitate and train. Since 1967, Jensen Ford Lincoln has served generations of families around Central Iowa. Quality vehicles, professional service, knowledge of our product, that's a part of Jensen. But what's more important to us is a trust that is passed down from every generation. Jensen Ford Lincoln wants to serve your family. We want to be there for your first car, we want to be there for your family SUV, and we want to see you drive away in the Mustang you always dreamed of. At Jensen, we want to be here for you now and every mile along the way. 
How can you help Marshalltown High School and enjoy a mouth-watering burger at the same time? By ordering the Bobcat Burger at Legends American Grill. Two quarter-pound patties with crisp bacon strips, sautéed onions and melted American cheddar, jack, and Swiss cheeses on top of fresh shredded lettuce on a toasted bun. It's absolutely delicious. One dollar from every Bobcat Burger sold is donated by Legends to Marshalltown High School activities. So, enjoy a Bobcat Burger and help MHS. The Bobcat Burger, another exclusive from Legends American Grill in Marshalltown. The Locker Room Report all brought to you by Wells Fargo Advisors in Marshalltown. Coach, you guys improved to 9-2. and two. Welcome into the Laurel Diesel Services post-game interview. Has to feel good going to, to get your ninth victory and that two-game slide here tonight. Yeah, it does. You know, I, I thought... Uh, I thought that second half was really good for us. Played a lot harder. Um, yeah. Kind of shut down 23 a little bit better and, and made some shots, obviously, so that helps. Yeah, we weren't really sure how it was going to go in the second half because it was just a five-point game at the break. And then the second half, they come out, take the lead. Yep. They go on a 6-0 run, but you answer it back with a, an 11-0 run of your own. And then you, you ended up, it was a 20-2 to two run at that point in the game. What did you think was the difference maker to go into that? Because you guys made some huge buckets, some guys were wide open for threes. I think we kind of just came to a realization that we're making this kind of a more of a game than we need to here, really. And, and you know, that's just focus on the defense, you know, and, and, and getting stops and, and understanding 23 is the guy that's going to make a lot happen for him. Uh, so we need to do a better job as a team kind of controlling what we can and get the ball out of his hands. That 2-3 zone that Fort Dodge plays pressures a lot on the perimeter, and I thought tonight when you were able to drive those seams, especially Treshawn Brooks, you were seeing the ball move from side to side, even get it inside to the block to kick it out for three. What can you attribute or what do you point to with such great ball movement against a zone where otherwise in previous games mm -hmm. it's been a little stagnant? Yeah, we, we, we've been working on that with, with the teams zoning us quite a bit now, just understanding our reads, understanding when we have driving lanes, when we reverse it from one, one, you know, the top to the other side. That's a good time to drive it at those guys. We can't just pass it around. You have to make those guys guard you and mm -hmm. then go from there. And, and Trey did a great job of driving those lanes and finding, finding, finding our shooters for, for wide open looks. Yeah, we, Go for it. Uh, I, I was just going to say, you know, we, we noticed one thing too in the game is that you know, with such excellent guard play, teams are limiting you knowing you're without a guy like Dalen Houston yep. inside. So kind of taking away that, that post presence. So that's been obviously a, a focus for you guys is to, to work, make workarounds to not being able to do that. Right, yeah. We, we, you know, we understand kind of the, the lineup we have, and our guys are, are doing a good job of playing into, of our, you know, playing into our strengths and understanding what we, we can and can't do as, as players and, and as teammates. So it's just a matter of understanding our roles and, and you know, utilizing our guys the best way we can. And you saw when you guys in that fourth quarter started to extend that defense, Fort Dodge's backcourt had some troubles handling the basketball, yeah. but it also seemed to uh, knock Javion Jondal out of the offensive flow because he's getting whatever yeah. he wanted in a half-court set. But once you sped it up, there really wasn't a lot of places for Fort Dodge to go. Right. Once we, once we switched to the kind of that full-court press, it, it, it gave us some opportunities because it did speed them up. They made some mistakes there. Uh, some quick shots, and we were able to get in transition and go. You know, that's probably something we could have done earlier on in the game maybe. Um, but, uh, you know, that's that's something we'll have to look at. Kind of got to feel it out for a while, though, too, yes, right? Yes, absolutely. You know, and you, you give John a credit. He hit some yeah. – I mean, he played well tonight. Yes, uh, he did. He, he, had some, he had some tough shots, and he got it going early to keep him in that game. Good victory tonight. We'll touch you tomorrow night on the road at East. Yep, sounds good. All right, Des Moines Thanks, East, coach. the opponent tomorrow night. That is our postgame chat with Coach, all brought to you by Laurel Diesel Services, your locally owned qualified diesel mechanics. We'll wrap it up from inside the roundhouse next, right here on your home for the Cats, KFJB and KFJB TV. When Mike Overton moved to Laurel, Iowa, he had a vision to have a diesel repair shop that would support his growing family and passion for working on diesel engines. Being part of the East Marshall community means ensuring that farmers, truck drivers, and businesses run smoothly. With a large building and state-of-the-art equipment, Laurel Diesel Services is always up for a challenge. When your farm trucks, semis, or other diesel equipment requires maintenance or the occasional repair, take it to Laurel Diesel Services. Don't let concerns about current events derail your long-term financial strategy. Edward Jones Financial Advisor Zach Wall can help. 
He'll work with you to understand today's financial landscape and how to be positioned for the long term. Edward Jones can give you the tools for a reasoned, disciplined approach to investing. Call Zach Wall at 641-752-3017 in Marshalltown or online at edwardjones.com. Edward Jones, member SIPC. Small businesses are the backbone of our community. Marshalltown Area Chamber of Commerce reminds you that when you shop locally, you are benefiting members of our community and adding to our local community overall. You'll find local business owners are generally more knowledgeable, provide better service, and even know their customers by name. Marshalltown Area Chamber of Commerce exists to be an advocate for our business community. Membership in the chamber benefits your business and adds to the strength of our advocacy efforts. For more information on shopping locally and chamber membership, go to Marshalltown. Org. The equity in your home is power. Power to remodel your home. Take a memorable vacation. Add a deck or patio. Lennox Employees Credit Union can help you unleash the financial power you possess with a home equity loan. Consolidate debt, fund a student loan, or pay for a wedding. Home equity loans are as low as 5.74% for a five-year fixed rate loan. The loan process is easy. See Lennox Employees Credit Union, 1004 East Main Street in Marshalltown. Member NCUA, Equal Housing Lender. Online at LennoxECU.com. There's a city within a city not far from here. This city includes a beautiful apartment building with indoor parking, a chapel, a movie theater, a swimming pool, exercise and recreational facilities, putting greens, and more. This city isn't really a city, but it is a wonderful place to live. Make friends and live your best life. It's the Embers Retirement Community in Marshalltown. The Embers provides security, independence, and companionship. Beautiful grounds outside and lovely studio, one- and two-bedroom apartments inside. See it for yourself. The Embers in Marshalltown. Once again, a final score from the Marshalltown Roundhouse. Uh, I forgot to write it down, Dylan. 62-41. Good victory here tonight for the Bobcats inside the Roundhouse. They're now 9-4 and four as Fort Dodge drops to a mark of 1-9. and nine. They're now 0-4 oh in Iowa Alliance North Conference play. I think standpoint, too, Bobcats go to 2-2 two and two in conference play here tonight. That's another Nice victory for them in conference action. We'll have more Iowa Lions conference action tomorrow night, so although it's North meets South on a Super Tuesday from Des Moines East High School rematch of these two teams who met earlier this season as the Bobcats were victorious in that matchup. But without Dale in Houston, without Prince Jolly, you know, no longer on the team. So some different pieces there that, that East, uh, you know, I mean, the Bobcats are going to have to be ready for that, too. So. Yeah, Prince and Dalen uh, combined for 37 of the 85 points in that matchup. The Bobcats won by 25. Bobcats have to win in a different way. If you shoot like you do tonight, defend like you do tonight, we're going to be victorious. If those shots don't fall, this could be a much closer matchup. Pre-game starts at 7.15 tomorrow night, and tip-off is at 7.45 here on KFJB and KFJB TV. For Dylan Doe's, I'm Brandon Lewis on camera work here tonight. Great job by Keith Stewart as well as Jesse DeMeyer on our producer on sites, Zach Tomish, as well as our KFJB radio producer, Jeffrey One Brooks. A salute to Brooksy. You couldn't see it, but we but, did it. But we did salute. All right, from the Roundhouse, I'm Brandon Lewis. Hope you have a great rest of your Monday night. We'll talk to you tomorrow from Des Moines. This has been Marshalltown Bobcat Basketball, and you're home for the Cats for 100 seasons. It's News Talk 1230 AM, 93.9 FM, and right here on KFJB-TV. Today's game was brought to you by Lennox Employees Credit Union, Marshalltown Area Chamber of Commerce, Assured Partners, Legends, American Grill, Jensen Ford, Sports Plus, Sports Medicine, Edward Jones, Zach Wall, Capone and Brown, Wayward Social, Zenos, McGregor's Furniture and Mattress, Tense Appliance and TV, Wells Fargo Advisors, Marshalltown Community College, The Embers, Marshalltown, Bruin Manufacturing, Ken's Transmission, Brown's Shoe Fit, Central State Bank, Calvin Rocket Bar and Grill, Top Crafters, Marshalltown High V. <laughs>